one big team. One big team. One big team. Is that an original? Like, is that from 91? What, this? Hmm. Uh, 90. What was 90. It, 92, was it? 90. 90. No. 90. No, you're right. It was no, 90. 90. Um, yeah, I think it might be. Wow. Second hand, mate, second hand records. There's a guy with full of boxes of second hand records who just comes around Greenwich. <coughs> and me and Luke Morton went down there a couple oh, yeah. of Sundays ago. Uh-huh. Leave this in, isn't it? Well, candy if you want. <laughs> Leave this in. Little tip for the kids. <laughs> I'm going to go vinyl shopping. Mate, I got that. That was like uh-huh. eight quid. You too, Joshua Tree. That's a fucking. I don't know if it's an original pressing, but it's early. Mm-hmm. Fuck, four quid. Four quid. Four quid. I was going to spend like 120 quid on this special edition, you know, snarky. Joshua yeah, Tree. there's that white one, isn't there? Yeah, to go out with all those other box sets, which is going to hit the fucking ceiling if I carry on. Anyway, uh, welcome to Riot Act. Welcome to episode 69 of Riot Act, the alternative music podcast with me, Stephen Hill, and my cheap vinyl collection, and him, Renfrey Deadman, and his inquisitive mind. I thought you were calling me a cheap vinyl collection. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hey, mate. How you doing? Oh, I'm fucking terrible, but let's just carry on. <laughs> yeah, I, we'd like to apologise in advance for this week's show. If you listen to the show, hoping to get some good tips on what wicked new music to listen to, we're really sorry about this week's show. We're going to be reviewing new albums this week from Coldplay. Everyone wanted it. From Slayer. Mm. Uh, <laughs> from DJ Shadow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> from Sleep Token. I'm from Bellevue Days, so stick around for Bellevue Days. Uh, uh, we stick wanna, around for one of the only good records. <laughs> uh, we want to give a shout out to our friends at Musicism. Um, as you probably know by now, they do online tutorials for the budding singer-songwriter and guitarist and producer. It's nine ninety nine a month at musicism.net. And vocalist. It's very, very reasonable. It's they're very reasonable. They're very good. If you pay late, they... They, they do send someone round to break your legs. I yeah, mean, they yeah. Quite, as they I are very strict on that. But, yeah, these, you know, just as long as you obey the rules, mm. you're fine. Apparently. But uh, you can get money off. Yeah, you can get money off. Right, uh, in capitals in the checkout. Yeah, you get 25% off, don't you? You do, man? yeah. And um, they, they consider that a favour mm. to you, mm. which means one day they will turn up and ask you to kind of like put a body in a bath of acid or something mm-hmm. to do something yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But that's fine. I feel like that's kind of... Just standard practice in the music industry these days, isn't it? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, it always has been. It feels uh, like you've watched The Irishman recently or something uh, like you that. I've not seen The Irishman yet. I, I would like to see it. it. It's bum I do want to see it. it. Yeah. Bum it's number. It's uh, 210 minutes. Apparently. It's a long one. Mm, long I mean, that Coldplay one. album feels like at least d- <laughs> quadruple that, to be honest, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, we have sold around roughly half the tickets for the Big Fat Alternative Quiz of the Year, which is happening on the 9th of December. Absolutely. At the Oxford House, house in Bethnal. Bethnal. In Bethnal Green. Oh, I felt like we did that. Walking so slowly down Bethnal Green. <laughs> All right. You know that one? Um, Mary Poppins. I don't Something like know. that, yeah. Uh, no, the Ragged Trousers Philanthropist Renfrey. The, oh, lovely. The early, um, uh, early 1900s socialist tome. Great. I did it at drama school. <clears throat> Cheers. <laughs> Sounds um, a bit dry, but that's fine. Wow, well, God, God, <laughs> is it ever? Fuck me. It's about painters. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's just about people <laughs> who paint. It's really fucking boring. That's what you pay 30 grand to go to drama school for, isn't it? Yes, but i tell you what's not boring, um, or it has been boring for a little while, to be honest. Our, our, our poor Patreon page, our poor Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash right act podcast has been bare has been bereft has become malnourished over the last few months it has. and you know me and renfrey have been struggling with the rigors of life yeah but i mean just struggling um but as soon as we finish this podcast recording this podcast today we're going to do at least two rioters reviews at least two uh, i can say for definite we're going to be talking about this girl and biffy clyro so yeah. we're going to be doing two british early noughties um rock bands yeah kind of like very similar vein rock bands as yeah. well you could argue we as well off in very very different we went off in very different directions, <laughs> directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um and uh that will be the first of a few we've also got another thing that we are going to do i'm still going to say it yet but because we keep planning it but that's more of a christmas time present sort of thing maybe isn't it that we're going to talk about that uh, i'm trying to figure out what you're talking about but if I'm, you're talking about what i think you're talking about we're going to record them over christmas i don't know if they're going to go no not go out but i thought we might announce it all right all right oh yeah we'll announce it around christmas anyway welcome to the agm um <laughs> <laughs> probably just a bit of mike also um if you're watching us on youtube 
thanks. Our YouTube channel is kind of back up. Royal Mail yeah. have stopped shafting us. So, well, I don't know about well, that. Fingers crossed they have. <laughs> just be- again, just before Christmas, we're going to be saying, oh, yeah, uh, Royal Mail do a, do a grand job because um, they haven't been doing that recently. No, they've been fucking me off. Yeah, like but crazy. we've had a bunch of the podcasts go up on YouTube. So if you do want to watch this on, or if you are currently watching this on YouTube, thanks. Congratulations. Thanks you have much. eyes. Um, we should also mention the uh, new website that I've been working very hard yes. on, copying and pasting my little fingers to the bone. Mm. Um, it's, it's a collaborative effort. It's myself and Dan. Actually, I mean, Dan, behind the scenes, he programmed the majority of the thing. I don't mm-hmm. want to take full credit because... Uh, but all of the posts say they're by me. I oh, know, I saw that. Which I'm like, like yeah. Sheer arrogance of this guy. I know, I know. Well, I didn't I didn't make it like that. I think Dan did. He's just He just likes to be behind the scenes. He's just very, you know, he's not proud of his work, but he should be, so shout <laughs> yeah. out to Dan. Um, but yeah, we have a brand new spanking website and it, it just it's just a bit slicker and a bit sleeker. Slicker and sleeker. They're yeah, kind of the they're same thing. Yeah. Um, but um, it has some nice little features. For example, uh, it has a search box at the top right hand corner of the screen. And if you type in bands, it will come up with all the times said band is mentioned on our show. Or in theory, it will anyway. I yeah. mean, I've still got a couple of bits and pieces to do behind the scenes with that. Although hopefully they'll be done by the time this comes out. So uh, yeah, super exciting stuff. That's excellent news. Um, oh, well, oh, and there's also all our Spotify playlists on there as well. And all that, yes. all that kind of... It's all on it's there. It's all on there. Just all go the there. All the stuff right, is on there. Yeah, right at podcast.com. Um, there's been a big week for festival announcements we'll talk about in a minute. But first, where else can we start with a thing to talk about, Renfrey? After so many years, the people wanted it. And it's finally happened. Motley Crue, having only just split up and made a big fucking hoo-ha about how it was a legally binding secession of touring contract that they could not get out of that was watertight that meant that they would never be able to reform so you had to if you were a motley crew fan if you were stupid enough to like motley crew uh, <laughs> you couldn't you had to go to those last shows well guess what guys who saw it coming motley crew have blown up that contract i'm not sure that's how contracts work if you just because there's a video where they blow up the Yes, the I saw that. I saw yeah, that. I'm not sure that's how contracts work. No. I'm sure no. there'll be a duplicate somewhere. I'm not sure it was a genuine contract. I'm not either. I get the I'm impression. Not sure, I'm not sure not only was it not a genuine contract in the video, I'm not sure such a contract ever existed. No, I'm not sure Because either. if it did, and it was as bloody legally blinding and blah, 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 as, it, as they said it was, mm. it would surely cost them more money to get out of it than mm. it would... At to, and then go and tour than it would to, do you know what I mean? They mm. said, oh, it would bankrupt us. I, remember, I interviewed Nikki Six when they first announced it. Oh, yeah. Um, and Nikki Six is an, quite a nice man. He <laughs> 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 is. He was a very, like, polite, kind of um, likeable man. But I do remember, I think I've said it on the show before, I do remember being like, why are you talking like you're John Lennon? Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you talking like you're <clears throat> Pe- Pablo Picasso? You're in, Mo- <laughs> you're in Motley Crue. And he was going, oh, you know, we changed the world. And it's like, well, you're in Motley Crue, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone changes the world by doing their job. Like, the world is different with Motley Crue in, as it would be. So yeah, that was, yeah. That would, if know. I wasn't here, you'd be talking to yourself. And, and the world you, would be different. And so the world would changed be different. The yeah, world, I have right? changed so the respect, world. Yes, Motley Crue. Yeah. Well, yes, Nikki, yeah. you, you you changed the world. Mm. Um, but let's take um, Renfrey and I's, or try and Renfrey and I, I'm going to try and take our feelings towards Motley Crue out of... Are we? Of this. Well, I think we should do, really, mm. just to provide... Okay. For a bit of, you know, because obviously right. just to quiet. us, Motley Crue coming back and people going, yeah, Motley Crue's like, hey guys, remember the Black Death? Well, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> and they're expecting us to go, oh good. Black, <laughs> Black Death. Nice. Yeah. Very um, good. So we're not happy Motley Crue are back because we like uh, sort of, you know, good, good music, bands, good yeah. music and stuff. So, but I think when you're a band and you split up in that manner, only let's, you know, their last show was less than four years ago it was on the 31st of december 2015 was mm. their official last ever show they're never coming back that's it the end that is it. um no more vince neil singing flatly which is how he likes to do it it's the I only flat that. thing about vince neil, <laughs> <isn't it>? um <laughs> yes. shouldn't fat shame vince neil but um you know it just felt really nice so i did um yeah 
Uh, Vince Neil, yeah, not a great singer. But again, like I say, taking our feelings about Motley Crue out of Oh, yeah, sorry. I, um, I, I wasn't doing very well at that, yeah. was I? Uh, the idea of a band making such a hoo-ha about their last gigs and then coming back together, getting back together less than four years after the last show mm. um, is it, just, even for Motley Crue, feels very, very distasteful to me. Well, it's all theatre, isn't it? I mean, I like. I imagine that's how they see it. And, you know, they're just... They're, theatre, they're, they're, more like. Uh, theory, I, I mean, they're, they're a cabaret act, aren't they? So, but that's, oh, I, shit, I'm not doing very well. At no, to you're not nice. doing very well. The, the um, point is, is I, I just think... You, as an artist, whatever a musician is about, if, if what you say to people should have some sort of meaning. So if you make a big deal saying if you're going to come see Motley Crue, you have to see it now. If you want this limited edition last tour ticket or last T-shirt, last tour T-shirt, if you want, if you're a committed fan of that band and that is going meant to mean something to you, yeah, to come back less than four years later, yeah, I think is, you know, I would feel somewhat cheated. Yeah. Because um, I would have uh, invested myself in the fact that this band were not going to be a thing anymore and they made such a hoo-ha out of it. And uh, a hoo-ha, I think that's what they're... A hoo-ha! That's how Al Pacino yeah, has been talking be, about yeah. it in the press. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, I, 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 yeah. I mean, it just leaves a bit of taste in the mouth, doesn't it? Mm. You know. Yeah, as, uh, uh, I, I, you know... We're, Again, it doesn't matter to us because we're not going to go and see Motley Crue under any circumstances anyway. And I'm sure a lot of people are excited. But there was a bit of Machine Gun Kelly who played Tommy Lee in the dirt. Now, the story is really they're saying because of how popular the dirt was. Oh, is that the excuse they're yeah, giving? They're going, oh, all these young people are now going. Um, Machine Gun Kelly was like, so many young people come up to me at my shows and say, oh, I wish I'd been able to see Motley Crue. And now they can. I never thought. I'd, and he said in a, in a better bit of acting than any of the acting he did as Tommy Lee when I never thought it would happen. Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. So Motley Crue, as soon as they smell, you know, they smell. My, I, I suppose really. You, you again, trying to take it's impossible to take the Motley Crue out of this story because Motley Crue are, like you say, are just money grabbing little weasels and. You know, apart from Vince Neil, he's a big weasel. Yeah, um, and they don't exist to have any kind of moral um, compass. At no, all, that's really, the thing. They? I mean, they would delight in the fact that they're pissing people like you and me off, wouldn't they? I mean, oh, they're pissing off. I mean, I don't really care that much. Yeah, I mean, well, but... it doesn't matter if, if they want to go and <clears throat> fucking rip people off and pay low. Like, well, doesn't matter to me. It'll be uh, yeah, and it'll be hundreds and hundreds of dollars or pounds or whatever, yeah. and whatever they wherever they end up. I mean, you know, fine. If you like, I think the thing is, is even Motley Crue fans, like the last time around, even people who really love the band, were kind of admitting that they were not very good. Mm. They're um, probably better now, aren't they? Now, the older you get, you usually get better as a band. Do you know what? I, okay, so I was going to say one thing. I mean, there, there, there isn't no precedent for that. I mean, look at the kind of resurgence that Axl Rose has had. I mean, now that he has his old band back. Yeah, that's true. You know, I've seen uh, Guns N' Roses, um, the, the, uh, the the latest incarnation. And and, but I've also seen Axl and Friends as yeah. well. I'm making this, this, this distinction between those two uh, groups. And um, Axl and Friends, well, really varied. I mean, when I saw them in Leeds with uh, Buckethead, it was one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. But then when I saw them at the O2 Arena, it was um, very dodgy, to say the least. And, yeah. um, you know, Axel couldn't hit all the notes and yada, yada, yada. Um, but, you know, these days, Axel is putting in a great performance for the most mm. part. And, like, you know, he's falling over on stage occasionally, but taking it with quite good grace, which is not something that he's ever really done <laughs> before. No, no. Um, and, you know, so th there's, you know, it's not as if there isn't any precedent for a band um, getting better. Um we, there's one okay um there's oh, one well, member I, of one band iron maiden get better every time you see them yeah. <laughs> well, actually i mean iron maiden were the, the best i'd ever seen them last time i saw them but there yeah. you go i think that was down to the show really rather than then I, I i don't think they performed the best i've ever seen them but the show was the best i've ever seen them. yeah it still counts okay well iron maiden there we go I'll allow it. Um, <clears throat> fair enough. Well, anyway, Motley Crue are back. 
Why did this have to happen? Uh, let's talk about festivals. First of all, Paul McCartney doing his best cryptic tweeting. Did you see oh, his yeah, tweet? Yeah, he yeah, tweeted yeah. a picture of Philip Glass, Emma Stone and Chuck Berry, uh, yeah. which I thought was pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Glass, Stone, Stone Berry. Um, he's headlining the Pyramid Stage at yes. the Glastonbury Festival next year. The 50th anniversary, 50 years since the Beatles split up. And yeah. Paul McCartney as the Saturday night headliner at Glastonbury. Renfrey, how do you feel about the idea of... Uh, you, what, you're going to have to have some sort of legend of the game playing Glastonbury. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for the 50th anniversary, I don't think anyone would begrudge that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think anyone would have been particularly surprised that they've gone down that alley. But mm-hmm. you, Paul, I don't really know what you think about Paul McCartney as a solo artist. Uh, I have no real love for Paul McCartney's music post uh, Abbey Road. Well, post mm-hmm. Let It Be. Not particularly. Um, I've never heard anything. But then, but then, actually, I'm being a little bit harsh because I've wings. Th- got a band on the run. Not particularly. No. no. no I mean, really. you know, you know, not. I've never really. Live and let die is good. Don't live it? and let die. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'll take the Guns N' Roses version. Mm. Um, and uh, because that's what goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Over the top of it, which Paul McCartney doesn't do, <laughs> um, and hence it's better. Um. Yeah, but I've, I've, I, you know, I've very seldom gone in on a. Paul, in fact, I'm, realistically, I've probably listened to one Paul McCartney solo album I've the whole way through. A bunch of them. Have you? I remember my ex? Well, I didn't know you at the time. But my ex girlfriend uh, was just would only listen to the Beatles oh, and yeah. the various members of the Beatles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she had obviously all the Beatles albums about four times. Would you recommend years. any of the Paul McCartney solo albums? Um, no, no, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> um, I, do... I have to say, I mean, I don't know if we've talked about the Beatles a lot on this podcast. I, really, I no. fucking, I, I, I adore the Beatles. Oh, the Beatles are amazing. Yeah. I fucking obviously. love the Beatles. I think they are. That kind of goes without saying, I think. <sighs> if you're a sort of serious, if you have a serious opinion, wow, it seems shitty to say serious, but if you have a, a kind of a rounded in, in, even a vague interest in music mm. like seriously like being into music there's no re- you can't really deny that yeah. the Beatles were brilliant I got you, um, I when I was on the Frontier tour I was going through a massive Beatles phase it was really quite nice to because um, I'm touring with this band who are like relentlessly heavy and like skull crushing it was so nice to then just put like Abbey Road on uh, and just like chill out in the in the uh, van to some mm-hmm. Beatles. But like, yeah, and I mean, you know, um, I mean, of, of course, the Beatles are massively overrated, but they're still brilliant. Um, but it's a tough one, that isn't it? Because you know, they're they're not as um, when if you watch, have you ever seen the Beatles anthology documentary? Which yeah. I have to say is excellent. Brilliant. But it's it's uh, it's the thing that got me into the Beatles. Yeah, it's really Probably. great, but. They do go, oh, and, that, and then we invented MTV, and yeah. then we invented yeah, heavy yeah, metal, yeah, yeah. and then we invented yeah, yeah, yeah. dubstep. And it's like, well, that yeah. doesn't even exist for another 20 years, guys. Yeah. But um, they're, what, not, what, they're not as influential, like, they're not as influential to everything as... Did they say they invented heavy metal with, was it Helter Skelter? Helter Skelter, yeah. Mm, yeah, no. 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 Uh, there's also they said they invented MTV as well, which you know. There is that track on Abbey Road, the really fucking long one, which is like seven minutes long. She's so heavy. That's my. She's so heavy. Is it? <laughs> that that. That's a great song. Is there an argument to say Doom? Um. No. Uh, <laughs> so no, because that's so yeah. Abbey Road. That's what. What's that? Nineteen. 19- that's 1969. So. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Black Sabbath were coming out around that time. I reckon Black Sabbath, like Black Sabbath, would have existed at least mm. by that point. Mm. Mm. Difficult one, isn't it? Yeah. Don't know. So I feel like I've gone off the topic here. Sorry. Anyway, apologies. Paul McCartney's not very good live anymore, and no. he's got a lot of dodgy solo records. Yes. Um, he does play a fair bit of Beatles stuff, though, doesn't well, he? Yeah, he has to. He'll do a, th- a nine-hour-long version of "Hey Jude," I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh God, he will. Won't he? <laughs> yeah, of course he will. <sighs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, and his voice is fucked now. Um, but a lovely uh, guy, though. I, yeah, I. You know, I, I've sort of. I had a period where I fucking. I got into the Beatles when I was going out with this girl and then I, within months, I hated them because oh, right. I was like, I just, 
you'd go like, should we put some music on when we go to bed, just like to listen to in bed? Mm. And she'd go, yeah. What do you want to listen to? What do you want to listen to? Oh, um, and she'd go, what do you want to listen to? And I'd say, not the Beatles. And she'd be like, ah, well, John Lennon solo album. (laughs) It's like, fuck's sake. More than four people in the world of all time have made music. Do you know what I mean? Um, People like that are absolutely exhausting. And loads of her friends were like, you do know the Beatles. There was someone trying to convince me once that Paul McCartney was a better bassist than Cliff Burton. And it's like, I'm Mm. sorry, but he's very, very influential. But he is not technically a better bass player than cliff burton he's not that is madness yes that is madness although very underrated bass he's a good bass player yeah. i mean they're all good aren't they do you know what i mean they're all good yes yes um, and ringo's a very underrated drummer yeah i don't i really want to talk about the beatles uh, oh, favorite Beatles album really quickly uh i think abbey road is it? It's a good mm, album. I think Abbey Road, Abbey yeah. Road I, 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 that was the one that I was really caning. Um, I mean, it doesn't count, does it? But Past Masters. So Past Masters is the collection yeah. of all their singles. Um, um, yeah, um, but, that, really. Well, the reason why I'm like, oh, does it count? It's because the way that it works back then is the singles weren't on the album. So I'm like, it's not a best of. It's a collection of all their singles, which were not on their albums. So does it count? Probably not, Still but not. Um, but Past Masters is I, I've been yeah, great. re re going over Past Masters literally the last few days actually. Oh, I would a... say they're such a good singles band. They're nearly as good a singles band as Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Mac is playing Glasto. Good for him. Uh, Download have added thirty seven bands to their lineup. Um, <laughs> uh, see if we can find a good one. Um, <laughs> Uh, are you gonna? Airborne, are you gonna? Is, you're gonna read them out, are you? Yes. Uh, Airborne, Baby good. Metal, Baroness. There we go. Um, Blackout problems, Bleed from Within, Blues Pills, Bocassa, British Lion, Bush. Oh yeah. Celador <laughs> Moon, Celador Moon Crow. Um, that's like a whole. That's about five names in one band. Yeah, then. I don't know who those. Are. Um, Chelsea Grin, Dead Label, uh, Dead Posey, Dying Fetus, headline in the main stage. Surely. <laughs> Electric Wizard, Killswitch Engage, Lit. Huh? Oh, yes. Lotus Eater. Marin, Ma- Marianas Trench, Obituary, Periphery, P.O.D., Powerwolf, Pup, Puppy, Skillet, oh. Stonebroken, Theory, The Last Inchi- International, International, fucking hell. Um, fucking hell. The Pretty Reckless, The Wild Hearts, that'd be great. Tiny Moving Parts, Uncured, Volbeat, of course, um, Wargasm, Wayward Sons, and Wednesday 13. Uh, Anything out of that you're interested in, Renfrey? Well, there are good bands there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baroness. You've seen them all. At least I've five seen times, them all. Uh, y- yes. Well, I haven't seen Lit five times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> although I have seen, <laughs> I have seen. Uh, last time I the saw the idea that you need to see Lit five times <laughs> to really be able to. I need to hear that song five times. The la- album's good. Place in the Sun. I was about to say the last good. time. Last time I saw Lit, um, they were playing a Place in the Sun uh, for the. I don't know. I'm guessing. 15th anniversary yeah. would be my guess because be, it would be 20th this year so it must have been five years ago hello mm. maths and uh, it was at the electric ballroom and i had a lovely time but i did stand at the bank and get wanked they've let in order yes they, they, they did got, they got that they got that out really a lot of people leaving it like 10 past nine do you know <laughs> i i have to confess <laughs> that the moment because they did like the album and then they did you know like assorted hits mm. <laughs> which are all from uh, A Place in the Sun and uh, me and my friend left during Assorted Hits. That's fair. But then uh, I saw uh, Jeremy Popoff in uh, The Black Heart afterwards and uh, he looks very different. Does he? To, uh, yeah, how he... He's just so, like... He's, like, got tattoos all over him now. And he, he? Was, like, had a, I think he had a shaved head. and Oh, uh, yeah, it was very, you know, not that... Fi- he wow. hasn't got that Elvis 50s thing going mm. on anymore, anyway. People don't always look the same. <laughs> After 15 years. Um, I, I'd like to see Bush again. It's been, I mean, I have seen Bush about five times, but the last time I saw them was probably about 1999. So I'd see Bush. Last time I saw Bush was when they first came back. Um, mm. and they were playing the garage downstairs at the garage. At that's the, where I saw back. them. When they, upstairs James was Cleaver Quintet. James Cleaver Quintet, Hawkeyes and... Uh, Turbo Wolf for playing yeah, upstairs at the gallery. I made the it's wrong a pretty choice. Pretty good bill that. Yeah, I made the wrong choice that night. Um, yeah. And I remember being really uh, annoyed. Um, but uh, yes, um, Bush. Hmm. I so I love the first three Bush albums. I think they're great. 
Like the first two. Oh, science things, mate. <sighs> Chemicals between yeah, us. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that because that is a really good song. But Great what else? song. D- I don't stop asking questions. Um, mm. Oh, fucking War Machine. Mm. War Machine's a great song. Is that on? Yeah, it's the first song on Science of Things. Yeah, it is. You're right. I memorize the basics. <laughs> and the oh, constrained well, spaces. Well, you put it like that. Yes. <laughs> great record. Uh, I saw um, Bush on the Science of Things at the Colston Hall in Bristol, yeah. which is With problematic. With 100 reasons supporting him? Or Bex Red? Vexred ah, supporting him. I might, didn't even go on that tour, and I know Vexred supported him. Might have been Vexred. Mm. I feel like my vitriol might have supported them as well. I can't remember. Okay, well, Vexred did support them. So lovely stuff. I'm not a liar. <laughs> All right. Um, I wasn't accusing the you. rest of it is pretty download, isn't it? It's it's just it's just very download. I mean, like. I can't imagine many people. I can't imagine the people who go year in year out who just buy their ticket. Uh, probably before lineups even announced, will be disappointed with it. I don't think it's particularly exciting. Um, mm. I, I, there are definitely good bands on there. There are good bands that we haven't mentioned. Yeah. The Wild Hearts. Um, the Wild. I mean, you know, again, I've seen the Wild Hearts uh, a whole bunch of times. Yeah, and they're great, and they'll be fucking great to download. I'm not going to go all the way to download to watch Wild Hearts. No. I'm not going to go all the way to the Wild Art to watch like pu- like a puppy. A pu- you know, I actually missed Puppy's London show a couple of weeks back, which you know, and I've seen Puppy again in a couple of weeks. Puppy. Oh, they okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go to with that. Picasso. Um, yeah, and that, but again, Bacasa, I wouldn't mind seeing mm-hmm. them again. Yeah. Um, Airborne, I've not seen for years. Always really good live. Baroness, I mean, the thing is, Baroness tend to if they're outdoors, they won't get a very good crowd. Um, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I Blue also. Within, I like Blue from Within. I like Dead Label. That's um, old. Um, uh, it's the guys who supported Gajira. Yeah, yeah, took yeah, yeah. Place, they, didn't they? Yeah, and they were they were really good. I, I wouldn't mind seeing see some of the smaller bands like Dead Label and Puppy and. Um, who else? I saw another one. Tiny Moving Parts. Like yeah, Tiny Moving Stuff Parts, like right. that. You'd be like, yeah, that'd yeah, be yeah, really yeah. good. Dying, stuff like Dying Fetus and Obituary and Electric Wizard at Download. Always a fun thing to watch. But unfortunately, it's all those kind of bands who won't get very um, big crowds. a very big crowd. Or yes, they is. will um, they will get put on a stage where the sound is absolutely dreadful or you can't see anything. And the other thing that's fucking irritating. I mean, I, like when I saw they announced Baroness, I was actually super disappointed because... Um, the majority, I mean, it, it depends on the band and it depends on the contract and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying that Download are the only festival to do this, but a lot of festivals will go, right, You, if you play our festival, you can't play that country three months beforehand and three months afterwards, which yeah. just basically means, great, we're not going to get a headline Baroness show. We haven't had a headline Baroness show for Gold and Grey in the UK yet. Yeah. And the earliest we'll get it is probably October or November next year. And I'm like, Ugh. Mm. and and for what for for baroness to turn up probably on the second stage with a shit sound at download festival to play to a couple of hundred people yeah great mm. yeah bummer annoying um there's some fucking dross on it isn't there skillet are as bad as anything that's ever happened in, on this planet i think i know skillet um i saw them supporting nickelback funnily Ooh. enough oh yeah <sighs> that was a long old night i'd say <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah you know uh stuff like P- you know, periphery with their new album again I yeah like Peri- but yeah i saw periphery were great on the second stage down a few years ago and they played to about 300 people i saw periphery this week i probably should have said i should probably review periphery oh, very quickly yeah you? yeah well fuck it let's do it now okay. i saw periphery at the forum <laughs> um and they were really really fucking good yeah i saw um, the forum last time they came down they were very good yeah well they they sold it out and they, they, they actually sold it out mm. uh go back to our conversation last week about fever 333 uh and various other bands and um yeah it was absolutely packed the crowd went apps were just insane all night and it's kind of a weird thing because i'm like I dip my toe into the tech metal thing, but I do find a lot of it relatively boring, if mm-hmm. I'm honest. But Periphery for me are by far the best of those kind of bands because it feels like, <laughs> well, it feels like they write songs. Um, and you can't accuse all of those tech metal bands of not writing songs, but a, a lot of them it doesn't yeah, really of feel like they yeah. do. Um, but no, they were really, really good. I really, I, I personally thought that the material from uh the new album for Hail Stan yep. was by far the best stuff. Although to be honest with you, it's the stuff I'm most familiar with as well. Although they did end on a fucking great version of Loon from oh, yeah. uh, three mm-hmm. lovely stuff. Uh, but like Church Burner and Blood Eagle and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, was, that that's was wicked. That, Blood Eagle's yeah. fucking... Ooh. That's when I was like, yes. Mm. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. Asteroid supported as well. And they were 
Uh, really good. I've been wanting to see Asteroid, oh God, for like three or four years. Um, and they never come over to the UK. So it was nice to see them. They weren't like, they were the first support. To uh, see them nice? Sorry? Nice, nice to see them nice. Oh yeah, I see them nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Bruce, Brucey was there. Um, and um, sure. Pliny. A dead man wasn't there. No. <laughs> do, um, do you have an opinion on Pliny? Um, not really. I've seen them. I, well, my opinion of them is I've seen them and I, I, as you said that, I can't remember anything about them. Yeah, super, super techie, 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 techie. Um, animals as leaders esque, instrumental. That's it. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and I saw them at Heavy Fest, which shows you how long ago it's been since I saw them. Okay. Bonjour is fucking okay. our you shit. You cannot up see this on the camera, but Bonjour <laughs> has literally just. I've got a spare SD card, right? And she's just knocked it over like just a fun. little. She loves it. Nice cat. Mm. Oh, bonjour. Absolute shithouse. Um, the father's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pliny are... Like, I, 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 the, the tech crowd and tech scene love them. And I, I couldn't sit here and go, oh, they're dreadful, blah, blah, blah. Because I mean, they're obviously not. Um, but I... Uh, I don't really get it. I, I was asking a, a mutual friend of ours, Matt Benton, because he's massively into that whole kind of thing. And he asked, um, he, I asked him, why are Pliny so massive? And he said, they do that tech thing, the Animals as Leaders style thing, but it does feel like they actually write songs. And I was listening to it and going, do they? Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and there were bits where I was like, okay, yeah, this is kind of song like, um, but you know they they were on for like 45 minutes and i was just a bit like mm. at the end of it but mm. yeah but periphery were really good uh mikey from sixth uh came on and did a little bit during uh reptile yeah pliddy came on and did a bit during reptile as well that really really long song right at the beginning of the yeah it was very good um well anyway they're playing download um moving away from download we are <laughs> We have also got our first headline at 2,000 trees, Yay. which I've written down at 200 trees I, <laughs> to attempt to belittle them as a festival. Uh, <laughs> not really. Um, Jimmy Eat World headlining 2,000 trees. That's a good yeah. booking. People have got re people are very, very excited <laughs> about it. Um, yeah. I think Jimmy Eat World doing a headline performance at that festival will be good. great. Yeah, yeah I think it'll be great. I think if they, and I imagine they will, I think if they just pull out all of their biggest hits, it will be awesome. Yeah, I would have thought. They, I'll enjoy them. Uh, we didn't review their recent latest album because it's not very good. Really. We didn't review it because um, we both love Jimmy World and we don't like to say bad things about them. Yeah, but they've been on a it's fairly slippery slope for this decade. I would say. Well, that was the only reason why I was considering reviewing it because we slightly disagree. Because Integrity Blues, the last one, I like when I first heard it, I thought it was a um, not good. And then I actually saw them live twice in the space of about three <clears throat> weeks because they came to London uh, twice in the space of three weeks. <laughs> not necessary. Um, and I ended up seeing them both times for some reason. And it just made me love the, the record. I actually, well, love, made me like it very much. I think yeah. it's a very odd weird record but i do i do actually really like it um but survival survivalism no that's nine inch nails survivor survives i'm a survivor the record is not very good i don't think no the one before that yeah uh no you're right i don't i i've not really i've not liked any of the last three there's like one good song on i love invented personally okay i think it's great but you know fair enough coffee and cigarettes mate Coffee and cigarettes. You're full of melody today, Renfrey. I am. I'm yeah. very jiggery pokery. Good. As my um, mum would have said. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're very jiggery pokery today. So, That's what she'd say. Um, we also, we do we have any live reviews apart from Periphery? Only one, nah. really, don't we? Only one. We saw, um, we want to say congratulations to our friends uh, Emma Van Dyke and Matt Hayday. <laughs> Yes, yes, congratulations. You might their, their podcast straight out of popcorn. Mm -hmm. um, M does a lot of PR of a lot of very, very, very good bands. Yeah. And they got married recently. We went yeah. to, I think, probably the best wedding party I've ever been to. Yeah. It's it was Back excellent. to the Future theme. Now, if you're a film fan, you've probably heard of Back to the Future. Yeah, and I you think probably I know, know it's one of well, from it's it's my favorite. I love Back to the Future. It's the best film ever. I think. I think fucking brilliant. The original is as close to perfect as films get. I think. Yeah, I think the first two combined is. I love the second one. It's I don't amazing. think it's perfect, but I love it. Mm. What's your beef with the third? 
it's perfectly good. I think if it came out as a film on its completely on its own, mm. everyone would be like, "What a great film!" But the reason mm. everyone slags it off, people do slag it off. Yeah, they do because the first two are so 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 brilliant, and yep. number three is just very very good. I actually agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I think I think three is a very very good film. Uh, but yes, um, so it was Back to the Future themed, and it was based on the on the Under the Sea Enchantment dance at the end of the first. Well, technically at the end of the first and the second film, I suppose, yeah. if you want to be anal about it. And what a great bloody uh, band they had um, oh. doing, starting with Johnny B. Good, yeah, uh, oh. and um, the dude from uh, I've forgotten his name already, which is incredibly rude of me, yeah, but so um, rude, <laughs> so so fucking rude. Um, from Bad Rabbits. Yes. Um, his name is it's, uh, Fredua. Is that how you say it? I have no idea. Fredua. I hope it is. He was bloody um, good, though. But he was bloody good, and he was dressed as Martin McFly. The mm. guy playing guitar, I don't know if you noticed this. Did you see what he had on his guitar? No. He had the picture. He had the same guitar that Marty <gasps> plays, and he had a picture of the family stuck in the neck of the guitar. It was brilliant, and they played. Um, the, the, I mean, just just to just to just to talk about the actual setting, just for a second, like the van heydays they go to such ridiculous the detail was amazing, was amazing. Like, save the clock tower posters say, yeah like and they had Mayor like goldie wilson like on the wall like it was so there was a fucking delorean downstairs there was a delorean like, downstairs oh yeah great it'd be you know like a bit 50s themed mm. there's a fucking delorean mm. downstairs mm. Mm. ridiculous have you been to um disney or universal studios or anything <clears throat> i haven't like that? Actually, okay no. my dad said he would take me when i was four and he never has so Oh, well, that's why you're so angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, finally makes sense. Yeah. 69 episodes in, we get it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, it, when you queue for the rides in Disney or Universal Studios, like they, to, to alleviate boredom, they create this, they're, they're very good at world creation. They do it at other, other theme parks exist as well, and, and they do do it at other theme parks, but obviously Disney and Universal Studios are the most famous ones. And um, uh, the, the detail that they put into that kind of thing is absolutely fucking amazing. But it was that kind of level of detail and brilliance. Mm, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I went to the Back to Future Secret Cinema a few Ooh, years ago, lovely. which basically created Hill Valley. Yeah, it'd be that, that kind was, of thing. It was, yeah. it was pretty good. It was, I mean, they had a lot more budget, I would imagine. Yeah. But they were on par with that shit. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the band though very very good covers of Whitney Houston and Prince anyone who can do that yeah get is decent they um, basically covered stuff from the 50s and, and the, the 80s. 80s and a real big fish cover as well that was good fun wasn't <clears throat> don't it don't be absurd oh he got Will very angry be serious he got very angry with me because yeah, I'm talking about take right. on me aren't I you are yeah <laughs> you probably didn't call it a uh, Weezer cover yeah yeah uh, anyway it was a good time really good time best gig of the year it was, it was up there. Was, uh, let's do some reviews. Was. See, that was like the thing where it's like, we've got to have something that we like <laughs> on yeah. the show. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of which, Coldplay. <laughs> uh, Renfrey. <laughs> Coldplay. Yeah. Uh, Everyday Life by Coldplay is where we're going to start just to get it out of the way, really, I think. <laughs> um, the eighth studio album by, uh, well... The most divisive band in the world. Coldplay. Uh, <laughs> You know who they are. This is going to be a rough one, I think. Um, so Coldplay, it's their eighth studio album. Um, this was your idea, Renfrey. You said, mm. I think we should cover the new Coldplay album. Yeah. So um, I oh. thought to myself, there had to be more of a reason than for us to just be like, ah, ha, 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 Coldplay. Yeah. Yeah. So... <sighs> Well, okay, a um, little peek behind the curtain. I just thought it'd be a really interesting exercise for us to do. So I apologise if we're wasting your time, dear listeners. Um, but I thought it'd be an interesting thing for us to do. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a similar um, discussion came up about whether we should cover the Stereophonics record. Yep. And I was quite... I was mucking around, to be fair. No, you weren't. You fucking love a bit of Kelly, don't you? First two albums I do, yeah. Actually, yes, I'd agree with you. Um... um and uh, the one with Dakota on language, sex, other violence. No, I don't like that. Oh, shush. Um, and my argument against it uh, was stereophonics. You know exactly what you're going to get with stereophonics. Mm -hmm. and I think with Coldplay, people have this. I think people have an impression that everything they do is the same. The and criticisms that they are a, a kind of very, very bland bog standard it's all very bottom feeder kind of obvious music is that is a criticism which you know 
I think it's probably s- not true. Really. I think some of that is accurate and some of it isn't. I think like that they, they can often be relatively bland. I will admit that. But I but I I think anyone who thinks that they that Coldplay do the same thing over and over and over again isn't actually paying attention to be to be probably fair to be totally honest i mean um they have done all sorts of things in their career um i mean they're still cack aren't they um a lot of a lot of it is um i uh i can't remember if i've said this on the show or not but i i have certainly admitted on twitter personally the first i'd probably go as far as to say the first three coldplay albums i actually quite like um, tell him how many Coldplay albums you own mm, come on um, mm, yeah mm. or I'll say it an hour okay all right well um through doing this review I um found out that somehow I own all of the Coldplay albums on a physical format <laughs> uh, and um now uh, oh, now dear. some some of them were gifted to me um mm. through in, the independent uh some of them <laughs> uh some of them I just bought because it was like oh it's three quid fuck it yeah um mm, yeah I don't have much defense. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think, oh God, I feel so embarrassed. Um, I think Coldplay, uh, Coldplay are bland, but then at the same time, they're a more interesting band than people give them credit for. It's an interesting paradox. It's the Coldplay paradox. <laughs> um, In a way. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say, Renfrey, about Coldplay, right? Coldplay, I, I, I actually, I can understand what you're saying okay. about Coldplay. Coldplay mm-hmm. have never stuck in one place, no. right? When you think back to, but then I think that's true of a lot of those bands. Sorry, I cut off my own thought then. But I think it's true of a lot of the bands who have gone for We Want to Play Stadiums from the sort of late 90s onwards right i think a lot of them that went like when you look at the kings of leon even maybe muse a little bit or when you look at the killers interestingly when, interestingly coldplay uh supported muse on one of their first they tours. did yeah they yeah, did yeah around showbiz um i think when you look at uh the very very big bands what a lot of them tend to do is ape is go for go for the kind of um exist in the same kind of space as U2 when mm-hmm. U2 were the biggest band in the world. Mm-hmm. I always feel like those bands go look at U2 and I feel like U2 for like, and this is what I think one of the reasons why people hate U2, what, one of the reasons, mm-hmm. but one of the reasons why people hate U2 so much is because they look at U2 from kind of the mid nineties onwards and they go, what a disgusting sickly bloated. overwrought bloated mm. sappy bland low level rubbish that is now as i i've said on this podcast before the first seven u2 albums i absolutely would go to a fucking war against anyone for i think they're all brilliant everything right? up to zupra everything up to zuropa zuropa from, sorry. from boy to yeah. zuropa everything i think is fucking x is is fucking astonishingly great like really really great and the thing about u2 is right is that you when u2 were born their influences were the ramones mm-hmm. television yeah velvet underground post-punk punk rock yep. um the rolling stones yep. and um kind of irish folk music bowie yeah and um, i think if you listen to that early stuff that's undeniable to be honest yeah and um it's just yeah. been tainted by a lot of the later stuff yeah but, exactly yeah. Ex- exactly um but you two have always got a kernel of that stuff. I think because they come from that place, I think you two... Ireland? No, from that musically, that place. All right. They've always managed to maintain at least a little tiny bit of something that, um, that, that means I don't find them utterly obnoxious. The problem with a lot of these other bands are, Coldplay being one of them, is their influences are... U2 in 1993 (laughs) right or Oasis you know or Travis yes or and that to me means that whole fucking even though they try and go off to all these different places ultimately you're coming back to a place which is musically ultimately not really very interesting so whatever they do 
And I don't think they're untalented. I don't think they don't try and do lots of different things. I think they probably do. I think they've obviously changed and evolved and adapted. I think they do quite on. a lot of different things on they... this record. Well, yeah, we'll get fuck me. We'll get into that. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I just don't think, uh, artistically speaking, Coldplay are. Uh, they, they come. I think they come from a very different mindset to a band like you two and that's why i'm always a little bit standoffish of them i can't really argue with that so i'm not going to (laughs) no fine okay um i haven't said that i own parachutes yeah i bought it when it came out good record it's all right yeah i mean good yeah well i think good is a bit much i think it's all right I think, tr- and you know, and they've got like trouble. Is a good, like, it's absolutely been played to the point where I never, ever, 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 ever want to hear it again. Mm-hmm. But it is, a, it's a well it's a good made, song. good song. song. Yeah, I good think. Song. I mean, for me, it rushes blood to the head. It's the one. You know, <clears throat> I know a lot of people say that, and I have heard I that. Fucking love I it. Think I was probably a little bit too anti Coldplay that. At that point, really yeah. it. But what are the big songs on that? Like, uh, the Scientist, put, yeah, Clocks. Put a smile upon your face. Uh, yeah, God put a smile upon your face. Uh, what's the first one? Politic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a. <clears throat> I would probably go as. Oh God, am I prepared to say this publicly? I'd probably go as far as to say that that's a very good album. <laughs> Heady praise indeed. I feel dirty. Um, and to be fair, to be fair to them, they seem to have a sense of humour. You showed me a video of a fake press conference they did. Now, 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 now. We need to talk about this, don't we? Yeah. So, uh, they, well, yes, they do have a sense of humour. Whether they have a good sense of humour or not, I really wanted you to see it particularly because as a ex-comedian slash current relatively funny man. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, that really means a lot. <laughs> um... I found, so it's a five minute video, which is a fake press conference, which is them kind of trying to take the piss out of themselves a little bit and just mm. trying to be like, oh, hey, aren't we we're wacky? And it's, um, it's Carrie and um, what's the dude's name uh, from Portlandia? I forgot. Yes. Fred, Fred Armisen. Yes. Uh, from and Carrie from uh, Sleet Kinney are the two. Yes, so it's the two from who, who make Portlandia. Yes, uh, who are very who I love that show. It's really yeah, great they're, show. they're 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 great, very funny. Um, <laughs> not especially in this video. No, not really. in this video. Uh, there's some just very odd. Oh, it's just it's bizarre, isn't it? It it, it gave me the impression that they are so so far away from knowing what ordinary people find funny. <laughs> <laughs> do you know well, Chris I mean? Martin was again he used to watch extras how fucking Chris Martin's brilliant in extras yeah extras was a long time ago though it's about yeah, 15 it? years ago wasn't it 2004 yeah, probably about that. Yeah, probably about that, yeah. you know so I, I think I think a lot has happened in that time and you know well they've released four records in that time and and uh, I mean back when Chris Martin did extras I would have sort of probably said that I you know what would they have been on X and Y or something like that mm. like there, there's a there's a lot of places that Coldplay have gone since then. They've made pop albums since then. They made that like schmaltzy breakup album, the Ghost Stories album, where they basically tried to sound like Bon Iver. Um, you know, they've done. Also, I mean, I'm such an expert on Coldplay. I've not heard any of these records. <laughs> have you not? Yet, okay. So well, a head full of dreams is the pop album. It's fucking abhorrent. Um, Ghost Stories is fine if you've never heard Bon Iver, <laughs> but right. if you have, you're like, why are you trying to be Bon Iver? Uh, you know, I mean, um, and then there's all the pompous Viva La Vida Loca stuff. And what? That's not what it's called. Viva <laughs> <laughs> La Vida Loca. Viva La Death. What's up? The Viva La Death thing. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I suppose this record is the spiritual Coldplay album. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to call it that? Because you know what I want to call it? I want to call it African Child <laughs> Strung Out to Over an Hour. That's what I want to call it. If you uh, see it, Get Him to the Greek. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's 57 it's 50, minutes. It's 53 minutes. Oh, it's 53 minutes long. It's a double album. Quite a short double album. It's a very short album. Yeah. Um, The Open Song Church, like, straight away I was like, oh, God, they're doing a world music album. Um, yeah, it yeah sound like, if you've seen Get Him to the Greek, Russell Brand's character in Get Him to the Greek is a British rock star who is um, who yeah. has basically lost the plot and and released a song called African Child, and it is just absolutely hideous 
And um, well, it's that cliche, isn't it? I mean, um, yeah. we were talking about the Beatles earlier. The Beatles did it. Um, they went to India, came back and made the White Album. Coldplay go to Jordan, and then they come back and they make Every Day Life. The, the, the first song is called Church, and it's all hand claps and whale song. And it is not good. It is not a good start. And I was like, Rem free. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it just does all this sort of like uh, Lady Blacksmith from Bazo shit. And yeah. then it just starts to sound like Coldplay. And I was like, oh yeah. God, I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's what's worse out of this. Um, it's, uh, and then Trouble in Town, it actually sounds a bit better, kind of lush. And there's um, yeah, I thought Trouble in Town. Is, is bit that, at that point, I was like, that's not too bad. It's got a kind of argument bit in it, which uh, was like a spoken yeah. word argument. Bit. It's kind of like Keys for Hoffman uh, yeah, by yeah. Tool for people who like Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yes. got a, and it's that got, so a, got a sort of Pink Floyd guitar solo outro. And I was thinking, yeah. I'll allow it. There was a, yeah. <laughs> I'll allow that. <laughs> I'll allow it, Chris. Um, there's a few Pink Floydisms I've found on this. I, I think the interesting thing with this record is it's um, it's very very bitty, isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of um, it goes into a lot of uh, sort of ideas for like two minutes and then abandons them. Mm. Um, now that is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, you were saying the same thing of the Wall, I believe. By yes, voice, weren't you? but that um, does flow a lot. Yes, but the wall, the wall flows like a river, mm. whereas this flows like a, a load of shit coming out your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote for the poster. <laughs> um, um, I, I mean, so the the is it the song after that broken? Broken, yeah, broken with a capital E for some unfathomable reason. Uh, it's got a gospel choir, mm. a gospel choir, and Chris Martin. Mm. I have to say, mm. it is at that point, Renfrey. I was like, this is like the sitcom, the theme tune to a sitcom from in America in 1984. <laughs> yeah. It is shite, it is tacked on bollocks, it is unspeakable rubbish. It's right? definitely the point where Coldplay detractors will be like, for fuck's sake and people slagged off bono for getting a fucking gospel choir in at least he was making them sing where the streets have no name yeah which is a good song yeah this is an absolute pile of shit it is so embarrassingly bad i mean i i to be honest it doesn't even register that highly for me it's just like okay you're doing that oh i hate i you hate i I was offended by it oh wow oh come on offended is there anything on this album that's offensive well i think it's offensive to be to be that blonde s- like smaltzy and cynical and 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 not even be well crafted i find that th- there is a le- th- the problem again with, with bands like coldplay there is a level of pretense mm. a level of um supposed grandiosity that translates to nothing that this record is got just absolutely chock a block with the loudest silence in the world yeah I, I, and, I, and that is what that song is that have, song is overwrought over emotional crap that means nothing i think the key thing that you said there is the grandiosity that leads to nothing mm. um which is what coldplay are immensely good at doing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, if ever there was a backhanded compliment um uh yeah and there's a there's a few songs on here that you could make that argument that that Daddy, you, you yeah the next song you you just wonder why are they there like w t o w o t w p o t p that little like acoustic ditty thing which mm. is about a minute and 10 seconds long and it's recorded on the street somewhere it's probably made meant to make him uh, chris martin sound like he's one with the people or um, when I need a friend is Chris Martin this later on. The when arm. I need a friend just sounds like a clip from songs of praise. <laughs> yeah. It's Chris Martin <laughs> like... singing with some monks for two and a half minutes. Yeah. It's rubbish. Uh, which is, I mean to go through yeah. them, I've got a little note for basically every song. Daddy starts with a heartbeat bit obvious. I think my heart nearly gave up at that point. Um, <laughs> they've got lyrics like daddy, are you out there? Daddy, do you not care? And you just think, please God, let this stop. Make <laughs> this stop. It, 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 it's like it's everything that people hate about Coldplay. 
they're doing the thing that that people most hate about them. They certainly don't give a fuck about people who hate them, do they? No, Clearly. they don't. In fact, they seem to which, be... Which, fair play. I mean, that's yeah, fucking great. Well, if that's for what them. you want to do. I mean, I maybe would suggest rather than just sort of falling into every bad cliche and stereotype that people that the people who hate you like to tag you with, maybe think about writing a good song. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Mate, that's just me. That would just be what I would do. But, you know. Uh, I, if it was I, another band, though, you'd say that's punk as fuck. No, I don't think I would say that was punk as no. fuck. I'd say y- the reason people hate you is because you're, <laughs> you're rubbish. You're doing what you're doing. Uh, and it doesn't make you... Yeah, I mean, yeah, mate. I, I wouldn't say it about Gigi Allen. Like, to take it to completely uh, the other extreme, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gigi Allen does what he wants. His music is still fucking inherently dreadful. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he might go, oh, aren't I punk? And it's like, yeah, but you're shite. Yeah. Um, yeah and I, but I will say, like, there's one called Wonder of the World. Like, that's the, that's kind of all ukulele and do what fucking rubbish i hated that <laughs> there's one on it though like i'm not just gonna sit here and go through every track and slag it off there's a song called arabesque on it which is quite good i okay i really like arabesque yeah, i think it's jazz horns yeah simple melody yeah and i'd be a liar to say that i was like this is shit like i would be a liar i mean it's I, I you too no but then i really like you too so i'm gonna let it slide i think it's genuinely interesting it's quite jaunty as you say the horns more horns this yeah, year 2019 horns, yeah. the year of the horn mm-hmm. careful <laughs> um um you know uh, and it has a by coldplay standards relatively dark climax i mean it's very sort of pg mm. dark climax yeah. but and i was listening to it and i was like going bambi's mum getting shot <laughs> You spoil that for everyone. <laughs> everyone. Um, <laughs> um, and um, I was listening to it and I was like, if Radiohead released this, I would think it's all right. <laughs> 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 so, so there you go. <laughs> I thought I think it's quite I would good. Smash up my copy of the Benz <laughs> if Radiohead released no, this. No, I, I actually think Arabesque is really Arabesque good. Arabesque is, pre- is, pre- is a pretty good song. I think that's a really good you know, It's it, clearly it, the best song on the it's record. A be- right? It's a good song, yeah. I'm really and, glad you agree with that. Well. Yeah. Uh, to go through some, like, there's a song called Guns, which I think is sort of trying to sound like Johnny Cash. Guns is but a weird one, up, isn't it? Because he's up sounding like Teenagers by My Chemical Romance. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? So he swears loads on it. And it's like, oh, Chris Martin, what are you doing? Stop saying the F word, you naughty mm. boy. It's yeah. weird. Mm. It's a, yeah, I mean, I don't dislike it. It's just a little bit like, it's like he asked Rob Flynn to write the lyrics for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And it's, um, you know, again, it's a, it's a song that opens the second half of the record. Yeah. It's less than two minutes long. Yeah. We should say that the two halves of the record, one is sunrise and the other is sunset. Yes. Um, uh, and there is, well, can we save the interludes? Uh, of course we can. For later on, because I want to talk about that, because I think that says quite a lot about the record, to be honest. Okay. Um, I mean that you know to go through the songs. There's a song, the second track on it is called "Orphans," and the That's first the time first I heard single. it, first single, first time I heard it, I thought that is a really cool bass line. Okay, <laughs> it's a really good bass line. I was it's distracted super by catchy. the annoying children singing in it. Yeah, to it's be super honest. catchy, and it nicks the ooh ooh again from Bad by U2. They've <laughs> totally ripped that off. First time I heard it, I was actually like, oh well, you know, this is kind of jointy little pop song. Oh, but really? that's the thing with, I guess, with with music, isn't it? Because you know, you're as you the good thing about music and if music is good is you kind of you evolve with it and you change with it the first time i listened to that song i thought that's quite an interesting little jaunty pop song and the second third fourth time i listened to it i thought no it's a fucking pile of shit (laughs) so it's rubbish do you know what it Um, went from being quite catchy to being as more annoying than barbie girl (laughs) within the space of four lessons that is come on i i um no you're right it was never as good as barbie The first time I listened to this record, I did just have it on in the background because I was just like, okay, I just want to sort of get an overall sense of it. And I was quite surprised that Orphans is the 10th song on the album. It's not the 10th track, we'll get into that. Um, But it's the 10th song on the album. And it was actually, because I was like doing shit, I was doing other bits and pieces and blah, blah, blah. It was the first point where I sort of turned to the stereo and was just like, oh, you're really annoying me now. (laughs) Uh, But because I wasn't, paying you know if i'd been paying attention to it then i would have been annoyed earlier mm. um but uh, and i and then when i looked it up and discovered it was the first single i was like oh of course it is <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. Say, it sounds like it's got all the kind of 
the bells and whistles of modern pop music like yeah yeah you know yeah. Uh, it makes sense and although it's not it's not as i mean <laughs> to, to go in on the uh coldplay discography it's not as poppy as some of their more outlandish poppy moments their last yeah. record was was a pop album and a very irritating modern one as well mm. um, um yes. just for kind of the rest of it uh, i think echo is bad cry 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 sounds like jamie cullen no no <laughs> old friends nothing to report really it's a sort of short acoustic song not really that offensive but nothing i would ever really choose to go back to in any way um banai adam is a fairly enjoyable instrumental i think yeah that's some sort of for the first half anyway it's got a nice piano part it's got some kind of spanish i think spoken word parts and then i quite like so, banai adam it's um but just very quickly it's written as uh, uh on the actual track listing it's written in persian i believe okay. on the actual right. uh, um yeah listing. And then um, a geezer starts going, may there be peace and love. And mm. then it drops off a fucking cliff. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Champion of the World, like, finally just sounds like ordinary Coldplay. That's surely going to be one of the singles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it just sounds quite like possibly. standard Coldplay. Yeah, uh, yeah. With none of the other kind of, like, Afro-Celt beat rhythm stuff on top yeah. of it. And the title track has actually, again, got a nice piano part. It sounds quite big. And I was listening to that right at the end, and I was like, you know, I can kind of live with that sort of thing. I can yeah. kind of live with that. Like, yeah. it's not, it's not good. Do you know, mm. what? it's not what I want to listen. to. It sounds like sort of a, Imagine Dragons drunk uncle, but <laughs> so it's not, it's not good. But at least it's just like, yeah, this is what Coldplay kind of sound like. I thought it was perfectly fine. No, I didn't <laughs> think it was that good. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, uh, this. This is Coldplay's world music album, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll take this. I will take this over the last abhorrent pop album. I'll also take it over the uh, breakup uh, Gwyneth with Gwyneth Paltrow album. Right. And and they did an album before that where they oh they had a duet with Rihanna on it, which was fucking abysmal as well. Yeah. I mean, actually, oh god, I can't believe I'm going to say this. <sighs> um, because it's the least annoying that i've heard for a long time i might even i reckon this is like the fourth or fifth best cold play record and that <laughs> drink that in <laughs> yeah. the fifth best fourth or fifth fourth or fifth um, best album but it's because to be honest I, I, this album definitely doesn't annoy me as much as it annoys you clearly when it's on in the background i think it's um perfectly nice i don't like it particularly but i don't hate it um and there's some sort of nice bits there's a few reasons why i do hate it okay and it's not necessarily because of what it sounds like because so much of it is so indistinguishable it is I'd i, say I half definitely agree of it with that. is completely indistinguishable yeah, yeah and half of it is like what are you doing? I think when I get to the, the what are you doing? You know, like I say, this is Coldplay's world music album. Who, who do we really blame for this? I kind of think like, wh wh when did this start? And I mean, obviously Paul Simon's Graceland, I think needs to take quite a big, you know, that kind of brought um, world music into a very mainstream consciousness. What really, year was Graceland? 1986, 87, I want to say like well, kind can, of mid eighties. Right. Well, so it's a long time Can you time not go ago. back to the Beatles again? As I said at the mm, beginning of I the... think particularly, well, not in a, I mean, yeah, the Beatles are the white quite, album, quite pop. The white album has a lot of, yeah, but that's uh, Indian, isn't it? Yes. Okay. What are you, uh, what are you specifically talking well, about? Well, yeah, I mean, Indian, obviously Indian sort of, um, uh, influences are part of world music, but I'm more thinking, this has got a lot of that kind of when when that happens, the Graceland happened, and then it's like Lady Blacksmith and Bazo came along, didn't mm. they? And that was some people like, oh, I I, I suddenly like world music. Heal and the then, world by Michael Jackson. Heal the world, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, well, even the end of Moonwalker by Michael Jackson, when you have a come and see the moon is rising. Oh the yeah, moon is rising. And that was like <laughs> that's Go Lady Blacksmith and Bazo. <laughs> Uh, I only remembered the other day that Joe Pesci is. Uh, yeah, he's going, <laughs> I'm gonna make all these kids take drugs, loads of drugs. That's my. I was like, well, why? <laughs> How is that gonna? Oh, we are gonna move on to a film that's even more nonsense <laughs> yeah. than Moonwalker um, in a minute. <laughs> but 
you know, and then sort of you suddenly had all these people talking about, oh, I really like Felic, all these kind of middle class white people with dreadlocks going, I really love Fela Kuti. And, <laughs> you know, and Damon Albarn did the good, the bad, and the queen. It was like, well, you know, oh, yeah. kind of Afro yeah, yeah, yeah. Afro beat. And it has been a thing that sort of sat in quite boring mainstream pop music. You look like what are they called, um, not Van, is it Van Vampire Weekend? Uh, they and Bombay Bicycle Club and oh, things yeah. like that and yeah, do yeah. that kind of yeah. they're awful those bands and then suddenly out of nowhere along come Coldplay with all these like fucking African child god complex I'm gonna heal save the world like comic relief music like I, actually I wrote down fuck, comic relief music as well fuck, in my notes fuck off forever <laughs> so I and I just like I I hate I just, I've got nothing against somebody who genuinely, <laughs> there might be people listening who go, I genuinely like actual African music. I genuinely like actual Asian music. Like when we spoke about Jambinai, yeah. who are Korean, Korean, right? Yeah. Now, I know nothing about Korean folk music, mm. really, mm. right? Well, not even really. I know about Jambinai, that's it, <laughs> right? Yeah. But the idea of a band from Korea mixing their own kind of traditional traditional korean, korean folk folk instruments, folk instruments with, with sort post, of post metal. metal and black yeah. metal it's, it's like to great. me that's something that i'm really really interested in i am not interested in chris martin dragging a bunch of like gospel singers yeah. into the studio and going hey guys yeah we're mates aren't we yeah. hey i reckon if we do this we can change the world fuck off yeah fuck off yeah i think there are ways. and i like you too <laughs> yeah, exactly. do you know what i mean like it's not like I am completely blind, <laughs> like anti, You're not totally blinded innocent. by rage by this sort of thing. <laughs> I like you too. I would happily. I want to. I keep saying I, I want to interview Bono on this podcast. Yeah, you and do. he's a, like got the worst sort of messiah complex of anyone ever. Even Jesus, he's got big, <laughs> he's got bigger. Jesus does have a messiah. He's complex. He's got a bigger god complex. All that son than of god, god bullshit. And I would still, I, I just go well, you know. Rattle and hum's great, like whatever. <laughs> fucking the get on fire is amazing. I'll fucking at least put up with you. I can't put up with Chris Martin. Do so there's think... that. Can I say the other thing yep, that really annoys me? And then I'm done. Um, the six track interlude, right? Oh yes. Sunrise, sunset, interlude one to six. Lasts in completion six interludes back to back. Lasts what thirty seconds? Four yeah. second, five second, ten second, four second, five second, four second, five That's second. There's probably some sort of mathematical message in there somehow. And it's just the, the sound of a church bell ringing. It's the sound of a bell. Right. And, uh, and sort of someone, there's a little tracks. bit of chanting somewhere as well. But yeah. Maybe, yeah. Um, that might just be the single most cynical thing any musical act have ever done in the history of music ever. Why do you say that? Because of streaming. They have put that in Ooh. because they're going to get an extra stream. There's 10 seconds. We've got six songs in 10 in, well, what is it? So it's four seconds, five seconds. So that's uh, it's, ten, it's know, about 30 seconds. Do you know what? Um, only in some cases, because you need to, um, it doesn't register until uh, the, sec the sixth second. So actually those four second ones are a waste of time. Right. So if, if that, if that is, if that is the reason for it, they fucked that up. Well, I, okay. Well, I mean, I cannot understand. I was like, that has to be, that has to be the reason. And surely that's the most cynical thing anyone has ever done. Like a lot of songs. There was, there was short. that, there was that band who released like a 50 track album and it was like 10, 50 tracks, 10 second tracks of silence just to get, and they actually got quite a lot of money. Did they? This is like the early days of Spotify. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, I mean, you know, um, but they're not, you know, I, and I know, it, like we spoke about JPEG Mafia last week, and how yeah. you know bands make sh and, and acts and musicians make very yeah. Very I mean, to be honest, short songs and lots of tracks. Yeah, it's, it's sure very maximized. It is the, very prevalent in hip hop. Let's yeah, be honest, definitely. and R and B yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I understand I just what you're saying. Was though. Like, is that not them doing that? I mean, why? Why else? Uh, does that mean Napalm? Does that mean The Kill by Napalm Death? One of the most famous songs is not. They never get paid any royalties for that. It was one second long. Um. No, no, they wouldn't. And you suffers four seconds, isn't it? No, they wouldn't get royalties. Oh, yeah, so you suffers one second. I thought, I thought it was four. I mean, the actual song is one second. Uh, yeah. The Spotify track might be. 
yeah. I think the Spotify track kill, The kill's like eight, nine seconds, something like that. Then they would for that. But, but it, it, it's six seconds before it registers. Apparently. It certainly used to be anyway. I'm, you know, I've not looked out for a long time. Okay. Um, so yeah, maybe. I don't know, possibly. Um, the question I was going to ask you was, do you think um, it is possible for Western bands to take those sort of Eastern influences and make good records? I Probably. Ah, uh, Graceland. Graceland's all right, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I think um, uh, Pearl Jam get accused of it a little bit with No Code. And I think No Code's a wonderful record. Um, we talked about um, Sunnydale Real Estate's How It Feels To Be Something On um, not too long ago. And I don't think it does it in such an overt way. No. But I definitely think it takes a lot of stuff from yeah, Eastern music in a far more subtle way. And uh, basically, I'm trying to say, yes, it is possible. I think it oh, is yeah, possible. Oh, yeah, I think it is possible. I think in the kind of the very, very schmaltzy obvious um let's drag you in and just do the thing that or what i think like you know what does what does the what do the members of coldplay actually know about actual world music i would be interested to know we don't know right we don't know i could but on the evidence of this i don't think it would be very much you. well they're going to uh <laughs> the day that this is released they're uh, going to Jordan, and uh, when the sun rises, they're going to play the sunrise part of the album. I, do you know, when, when you say they're going to Jordan and the sun rises, I was like, is that when Harvey's going to get up? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Jordan and her son. It's all right, isn't it? Nothing offensive her? about that. I'm not saying about her, have I? Should we just end it there? <laughs> yeah, let's end it there. Um, so this album's really bad. Um, I, it's a good, I'm glad you brought in Renfrey and I tried, I did try. Do you think we'll be reviewing Coldplay's ninth album on the I, show? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't oh, think. Who knows? I mean, the thing is. Might be a Deathcore album, you never know. They've not explored that yet. They haven't, no. So. And I will try to fix you. Yeah. I mean, fix you is just such a massive ripoff of um, Small Where Is My fun. Mind by the Pixies. Oh, never noticed that what when you try your best and you don't succeed oh yeah you do what you want and you get what you need try this thing and spin it yeah <laughs> oh yeah so there fucking you go. blatant and you know what I would say oh well uh, you know did Coldplay even know the Pixies are when that came out that came out around the same time as the Pixies reformed and everyone's going mad for him. So I bet Chris Martin went, now oh, why is it? Oh, I like that song. It's in Fight Club. Do you know what? Pixies reformed in 2004. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think X and Y came out 2005. So yeah. there might be some precedence for that. Who yeah. knows? He ripped it off. And it's not as good. Anyway, Everyday Life by Coldplay is out now. It's all right. Uh, we, <laughs> we did it. We had a go. We had a go at doing it. It's um, fine. It's fine. And I'm sorry. All right, so Slayer, <laughs> from Coldplay to Slayer, uh, as the world always intended it, Renfrey. Um, Slayer, the repentless killology. As Slayer departs this mortal coil, um, they leave us with their first ever movie, a revenge thriller of sorts, and then uh, a kind of concert film at, uh, at the end of it as well, filmed at the LA Forum in 2017. So essentially... Um, what this is, is uh, kind of three Slayer music <clears throat> videos um, interlinked with some sort of narrative. Narrative is a very strong word for it, but yes, mm, yeah, if you, if you will. Yeah, it's a strong word. Um, it is their first movie. It's certainly not their first concert film. There have been, there've been plenty of those. Yeah. In fact, well, I, I own about four <clears throat> Slayer concert films on DVD. I own three on DVD, yeah. yeah. Got um, a particular favourite? Um, I do think the still reigning one where they play Rain and Blood and Fall Absolutely. is very, very, very yes. good indeed. That's great. Um, I War do, Warfield, you got that? Um, yes, that I do. That's very good. Quadruple film. Fast, yeah. and i also like because uh, that's got quite a lot of god hates us all material hasn't it because it's yes. uh that yeah. era mm -hmm. and uh i also like um divine the intervention. divine intervention yeah. one they're the, they're the ones yeah and they bring uh because they bring rob, rob flynn out don't they, they do. that. uh yeah uh, i can't remember what song it is but um yeah you know and they're all uh they're all uh, slayer in concert aren't they i mean yeah, you are. know what you're gonna get kind of thing um i will say that the concert footage for this is you know, really good in terms of the filming. It's probably the best. I think by yeah, far. I, I think it is actually 
the best looking yes slayer concert film yes so that, that, that's what i'm saying yeah. i'm not I'm, For, I'm not necessarily saying it is the best no? but it's certainly the best filmed and the it's, best yeah and i think there's a couple of reasons for that one obviously there's a lot of kind of swooping <coughs> shots there's a lot of shots taken from on the actual stage yeah and um so yeah they obviously the either cinematography had or drawings wanna, or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. You know? um the cinematography if you want to call it that's that, what is, i was searching for yes. is probably is well not even probably is it is the definitely best. Yeah. the best you've ever seen yeah. from a live slayer show ever and, and it also it is really nice i mean i went to see them at wembley arena around this time last year yeah. actually and um seeing well you sort of see what i mean by the fire now mm. right yeah well that's the other thing i was going to say it's definitely the most even the rain in blood show yeah at the end yeah blood when rains blood on them and that's kind of it really and normally yeah. like i <clears throat> every slayer show i've ever been to and i've been to a lot um but i never saw them in an arena mm. i'm pretty gutted that i missed that wembley show now i think it's the same night as wilhaven what the fuck it was that? yeah it was it was it was fantastic yeah. it was it was so much better than i thought it would be yeah it was very very good so um having seen a lot of slayer shows having and then having seen the just the fucking absolute heavy metal bombast of that live show i, I was it made me go uh, maybe i pulled a whoopsie there by not going to, to i said it this time last year at the end of the day slayer with fire is just fucking cool mm. it just looked great i mean you know at i the end of the, thought the set list was really good the set list well. is very very good yeah, yeah yeah and it was i'm pretty sure it was the same set list as wembley and you know yeah it was um it's very the concert footage is very good yeah i but very that's very not, much that's not necessarily the film no is it? um <laughs> that's not the most exciting thing to talk about either <laughs> yeah um, um so <clears throat> jason trost plays wyatt who goes to avenge the death. Essentially, it's a kind of avenging the death of his pregnant girlfriend and enlisting um, amongst the, uh, well, Danny Trejo, uh, who you might know from Breaking Bad and from um, every lots of m- mean things, film the, ever. And the, the Nachos advert. Yeah. <laughs> Old <laughs> he El plays, advert. Um, he plays Machete in that yeah, Grindhouse machete film, Machete. Uh, Grindhouse. I interviewed him once. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For yeah. Hammer? For Metal Hammer, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, over the thing. Yep. Was he nice? He was lovely, yeah. yeah I bet he, he was really, really cool. He uh it was actually they were meant to call it two in the morning. Oh fuck, okay. So I was like, fucking hell. It was one of those ones they're like, You've got him at two in the morning. It's like fucking hell. So I gotta wait up and then at two in the morning I got a call going, He's not gonna be ready for another hour and a half. <gasps> I was like, Oh man. So I had to work up till half three in the morning. Right. And um Yeah, and then I I got him and he was really great. He was really great. Lovely. Yeah, really I'm sure great. he's a lovely and man. And Jessica Pimentel from um, yes. Orange is the New Black, who's yes. also going out with Thomas Haker Ooh. from uh, Meshuggah. And she's a massive metal fan. She's in the band, mm-hmm. I believe, as well. And I've interviewed her as well. I mean, she's she is re- she's really lovely. She's a real sweetheart. Okay. Like a really nice person. Um, so we know that nice people are involved with this film. So nice people. And Slayer. And Slayer. <laughs> I've interviewed <laughs> Kerry King as well. And he's kind of nice. If very... Slightly intimidating. Has <laughs> some interesting views, but yeah, yeah. it's got over that. No, I have no interviews. Gary King. Okay. I I asked to uh, once, um, but the uh, but I said what I was going to ask Kerry King, and then I was denied. <laughs> What were you going to ask Gary? I don't think I should say it on the Haircuts? show. Haircuts? No. <laughs> right. Fair no, enough. I won't say it on the show, but yeah. Well, I'm going to find out what that is later. Yeah, you can find out later. Um, so anyway, this basically is a pretty rudimentary um kind of gore fest with slayer chuck grindhouse in. cinema isn't it yeah and um, when like um grindhouse had this big sort of uh, well big resurgence had a minor resurgence i guess when uh quentin tarantino and, and robert, robert, robert rodriguez. rodriguez got together and did or the, the grindhouse project the grind the grindhouse project if you will yeah um uh, which, which ended up being split in this country yeah. it was the film's death proof and uh planet, planet terror forbidden, forbidden? planet i think no. it was planet terror planet terror i've forgotten yeah and then that kind of started this spate of um because there were fake trailers uh for those movies which you know was quite like kind of it was kind of like a fun little project and then it just went too far because then we got stuff like fucking like machete and mm. hobo with a shotgun did you ever see hobo with a shotgun no i didn't see hobo oh with God. a shotgun no i like i i don't get offended easily mm. right 
Until someone says a rush of blood to the head is not a great album. <laughs> then I get furious. <laughs> um, but Hobo with a Shotgun is a really nasty little film. Mm. It's it's just it's just nasty. Um, and um, this Slayer film, I wouldn't. I mean, it's too shit to be nasty. <laughs> I think it, it's quite a grim. It's a. I mean, you know, it's Slayer. For a start, yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't ever yeah. expected it to have been, uh, you know, anything other than utterly, utterly brutal. Well, that's the thing, because when you hear, oh, of course, Slayer doing a movie, that sounds, sort of sounds all right. Until you think about it for longer than three seconds, it's like, oh, Slayer doing a movie. I mean, what else is it going to be but Grindhouse, B-movie, violence and with, you know, I mean, as I, as I said, you said there's a narrative to it. I think that is a really, I think that's being very kind to the word narrative. It is essentially a man called Wyatt killing people in very nasty ways. Yeah. Uh, in order to, have, yeah, in order yeah. to avenge. While, while the, Slayer playing the background. The, while Slayer playing the background. In order to avenge the death of his uh, pregnant girlfriend. Yeah. which And that's quite a <clears throat> horrible thing to see because you see that. Yes. You see, you see uh, her <laughs> death, um, yeah. which is completely, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just, I'm kind of like, I feel like it's There's aimed. so much that you go, that was not called for. No. no like a good filmmaker <laughs> no. would not have no. done that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just... A, There's I've, a bit where he st they stamp on the guy's skull, mm, right? Mm. And you just see him, you see the skull crack and you like, oh, fair enough. Mm. You go, that's not very nice. And then he it's carries on nice. sort of stamping on it. Mm. And then you see like a sort of, just a smashed up skull that this guy's stamping on. And I was like... We, I got it. Right? There's it's a lot of lingering. There's a lot of lingering shots which probably aren't necessary. Yeah, and popping you know, someone's eyeball. Oh eyeball yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Horrible. I mean, the um, just to uh, go back to this uh, stamping on the skull, always a favourite topic of mine. Um, there are uh, two scenes in two films which are where something incredibly similar happens, i.e., identical, uh, irreversible and drive. And if you want to, yeah. you know if you want to see the difference between how you sort of do that well and artistically and interestingly, and then mm. how some amateur does it, um, cool. Called... Well, I mean, the, the, I mean, we must have spoken about irreversible, uh, probably the most mentioned film we've ever, yeah. on this podcast which ever. Which is quite uh, disturbing. Is pretty really. weird, isn't it? Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, I mean, I did think that as well. I thought, oh, it's, but rather than whereas irreversible, you go, oh God, please. Like this is really just traumatizing in the Slayer film. I did just go, okay i've got it now i just kept laughing mm. i found this really laughable it's a bit where he pulls a guy's heart out from his stomach yeah you go yeah. i what are you made of like, yeah yeah <laughs> who could physically do again i'm looking, looking at the reality that well could you actually do that i mean obviously no you couldn't but you watch it i was like come on man like he pulls an actual heart i like cuts yeah. in his stomach yeah puts his hand in his stomach reaches and up, reaches up pulls and then his heart out and the heart yeah. beating sort of yeah. thing i mean yeah. obviously it's a silly film but there are a, a few bits film. that are genuinely quite i thought quite nasty okay well danny trio um kills a guy in front of his wife and kids mm. which is you know just a horrible thing to see mm. i didn't like that i think they i think it's just sort of like i sort of question the um motives of the people making it really in, in the sense that like do I, I, as i said i laughed at a lot of it because i found it really amateurishly done i wasn't laughing in yeah, a, the like, acting and the performances are very very bad the acting and the performances are really bad but not even that just just the manner in which it's shot and like there's a lot of <clears throat> like people sort of um they come from the left hand side of the shot or whatever like that and then suddenly they're on a different part of the you know <laughs> yeah. i mean it's laughably bad it is it's very very amateurish and very very sort of poorly done and done in you know to be, to be quite poor taste mm. um and there was a review of this um it was on louder.com so i can only assume it was um for metal hammer or mm. classic it matt Rock. mills it was matt mills yeah hello matt yeah. um um uh, lovely if guy you, if you listen to matt yeah, I, I, I think he does. I, I think he does from time to time. Yeah, Thanks, so Matt, so yeah, listening. thank you, Matt. Um, lovely, lovely dude. And and Matt was Matt seems like genuinely quite affronted and offended by the film. And I have to say that I 
I find it quite difficult to be offended by this because I find it difficult to be offended by something made so poorly. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, I think it's just, you know, there are bits in it where you go, he shoots a pregnant woman in the stomach. Mm. And I don't, you know, and the thing is, is like, if you are doing that for, I mean, Irreversible is a great shout because that is truly horrifying material. But that kind of hint, that... You know, again, that that is not made to titillate. That's that's or it. to, to that's sort of it. to make you go, oh, cool, dude. Exactly. Whereas I think, you know, like I'm all the guy when you know, because there are a few bits where I went. The, the bit there's a bit where he stabs a guy's hand into a, a uh, wooden plank. Yeah. yeah so yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, a wall. Yeah. So the guy's hand is basically like, and then he pulls him off. Yeah. And he doesn't pull. Oh, the whoa, whoa, whoa. Off. He pulls his hand. He pulls. Well, he I pulls know this the, is episode sixty nine, the but there's man no need for that. Off of the away from the wall, and yes. his hand just splits in half yes yes and stuff like that like as someone who likes horror films and you know watched a lot of violent films you do sometimes see things and you go well that's very that's very creative that makes you that makes you wince because you can kind of you can almost sort of imagine that kind of pain Mm. and that's that's like a little bit more creative and a little bit more kind of like yeah that has that has an effect actually has more of an effect than the eye popping bits for example because it's so poorly done but then when but yes i think i think you know, for me, if you are going to do that kind of gross out grindhouse, like just everybody gets killed in these creative ways or whatever, there's some stuff like, for example, shooting a uh, shooting a pregnant woman in the stomach. Yeah, I, I is not cool. I don't think that's that's not the sort of thing that I I want to get titillated by. And you know, I suppose if you go over there, I've got a load of death metal albums that talk about some pretty fucking horrible stuff but i do think that you know the the sort of the climate and the um uh the the kind of want for people to express and to create those kind of images and that and you know danny trio stabbing that guy in his like his home in front of his wife and kids Mm -hmm. again and then kind of reaching for it. Like you actually don't see him kill the children, but you assume that he does yes. because he's about to kill the wife and you see him sort of go to stab the wife. And you're just like, well, that kind of home invasion shit, like doing that in front of children. And, you know, again, particularly the, the shooting an, an unborn baby in a woman's stomach. I just think is, is, you know, like I just was like, that's a shame that you've done that. I think you hit on it perfectly when you said, it's done to titillate and that's what i mean by you have to question the filmmakers or the writers or whatever or everyone involved um the the it's it's when it's it that's kind of the the whole piece is diffused with that desire to titillate and as you say make people go oh sick that's Mm. really oh that's gross oh my god oh and because it has that feel about it and the stuff that is happening is, you know, genuinely quite nasty. It's just that it's just rubbish. Mm. And I just, I just kind of. And get... even Slayer themselves and, and the sort of shit that they have in their lyrics and the sort of shit they say in their songs and the kind of imagery they have, which can be very, very violent, very nihilistic, very nasty, very kind of cruel. Um, I don't think they've ever gone to the lengths of like those cartoony extremes. Yeah, yeah. Like there is something about Slayer, which does kind of tap into genuine darkness and something like that. Like I say, it's just, it, it treads a really awful line between like I say, titillation and very, and just very poor taste. Mm. Um, and it's not well done. Nope. Uh, and you don't, and you know, th- there's a few bits. I, I thought the what it did make me remember, think is that, you know, for example, repentless, there's the, that I wasn't very keen on Repentless as a record when it came out, but listening nope. back to, I mean, particularly the title track mm-hmm. um, is really good. It sounds, it sounded really good with all that kind of prison riot fucking image going around. Yeah. And stuff like you do go, Oh, you know, actually yeah. that album sounds much better than I remember it sounding. I can't remember the last time I even bothered listening to it. <laughs> the main issue honest. with Repentless is it's just in very, well, it's very repentless and it's very repetitive and that's, yeah. that's the thing. It kind of sounds good in five minute chunks, but outside of that, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it sounded good in this film, and yeah. the song sounded good within the sort of the um, the the you know with with everything else that was going on around it. But ultimately, yeah, not good. And then Slayer when they turn up at the end. Mm. Um, 
um, and do a bit of acting. acting. Um, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> it's <that's... laughs> I mean, we can't ruin it because people will want to go, will want to watch this. And I would say, you know, it's 40 minutes long. Um, it's worth watching for the live Slayer footage, but as a film, I mean, it's not very good. Oh, it's, it's, it's atrocious. It's, it, it's, it's absolutely rubbish. But I like, I don't even think it's atrocious in a, I'm really offended by it way, because as I say, it's just not well made enough for me to be offended by it. I just thought it was laughable. Um, but you know, there you go. Um, I think um, I don't want to spoil the Slayer bit at the end, but uh, I would be really stunned if Slayer actually reacted in the way that they did in real life to what happens in in that manner. They wouldn't at all. No, I don't think anyone would. <laughs> no. <laughs> crazy yeah it's uh it's really funny gary Uh, holt looks like someone's just farted and believe me it's a lot worse than that there's a dead body there i don't even say that much because there's a dead body throughout the whole thing there's a dead body in front of slayer and they just sort of go like like who's left their socks on the floor (laughs) (laughs) dead body outside your dressing room in fact if if like your mum would be like oh pick your dirty what pants up (laughs) off the floor that's what slayer looked like when there's a man dead in front yeah. of them oh oh dear mm. it's uh yeah it's yeah it's rubbish the concert footage could say concert footage is really good yeah and i love slayer it's not the thing about this is that none of it's slayer's fault <laughs> this isn't very good no i suppose not you know everything every time slayer turn up you go yeah this is yeah slayer but mm. you know it's just all the other stuff Mm. which is pretty bad anyway that's um slayer the repentless killology which is out i don't know killology um, isn't even a word that's oh, it is now that offended me <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah because because i don't because i didn't make it up <laughs> um let's move on um let's talk about dj shadow this new album is called your pathetic age i thought it was our pathetic age that's your pathetic age okay Pretty sure it is, Renfrey. Lovely stuff. I'm going to double check it, though, just for the for kicks. Anyway, while you, you carry on, I'll yeah, double I'll, check I'll it. I'll do that. Uh, it's the sixth studio album from the much-loved producer stroke DJ, a double album. The second double album of the week, lucky us. Um, <sighs> uh, the first album compri- comp- com- uh, is comprised oh. mostly of instrumentals, um, very much like his classic uh, introducing album. It is our pathetic age, according to Wikipedia. Is it? Well, I've got it on Spotify right now, and it says your. This is an exciting... I thought the arguments were going to come during Sleep Token, but uh, obviously not. No, clearly not. Oh, it's not loading up. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. Whatever it's called. It's the new bloody fucking DJ Shadow album. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is our pathetic... On Spotify, it says your pathetic age. I think. And that doesn't make your sense. Your pathetic age. Yeah, your pathetic yeah. age. Uh, that's really yeah. annoying because I thought it was called that and I changed it when I saw it on Spotify. So screw you, Spotify. Yeah, um, fuck you, Spotify. For lots of reasons, frankly. But, <laughs> but yeah. It is our pathetic age. You're, you're absolutely right. There we um, go. Yeah, fucking <laughs> fuck's sake. Uh, anyway, introducing um, by DJ Shadow, the, uh, the instrumental record that I just referenced, which is kind of similar to the first half of this record. Yes. Um, the second half is in a kind of uh, collaboration with a bunch of vocalists and rappers. We'll talk about that in a moment. But introducing producing is a modern classic a very very influential very unusual record um a record that came out um at a time and i'm not really sure i'm sure it wasn't the first instrumental hip-hop album but it um it did kind of it's definitely one of the definitive ones yeah i think i think it was particularly influential for um the hybridization of uh disparate sounds that you couldn't imagine i mean dj shadow was very well known for just having a monumentally mammoth vinyl collection when vinyl wasn't cool again in fact it was very very uncool at this point we're talking introducing what 94 Mm -hmm. um and um yeah he would just mix you know like jazz with metal and uh just doo-wop with freaking i don't know blues i don't know like anything and everything and introducing was like a really weird mish mash pot of all sorts of things Mm -hmm. which you would have thought shouldn't have worked but somehow did um and um at the time 
Um, yeah, it's probably not right to call that revolutionary, but it was certainly quite new and quite different and quite distinct. He toured as the support act to Radiohead on the OK Computer tour. Yes, he did. Yes. Um, where, uh, who and they were incredibly complimentary about him. Mm. Um, obviously, he then went on to work with James Avell and Uncle. Um, we've spoken mm. about science fiction on a previous Writers Review, an album which I very, very much like, even though you know I do concede it has dated quite mm. a bit. Mm. Um, I think I'd probably say the same of introducing as well. If I'm, yeah, if I'm I've honest. not listened to it. I did a quick listen to it. But um, um, uh, just very quickly, I actually think introducing is considered the classic. I think the private press, which is the follow up, is yeah, actually really... far better. Uh, no, not far better, but I think it's better than introducing personally. But yeah, you know. I think it's, it's, it's touch and go. Okay. I would say. I wouldn't, I absolutely wouldn't. I'm not going what? Uh, that ah. at all because I think, you know, the private press is is fucking really really damn good i think it's i think it's bad but anyway introducing is um yeah very very important record certainly um it's one of those records um i think i referred to this last week or maybe the week before maybe it was during jpeg mafia or something like that it's one of those records that people sort of went oh you should listen to this because uh there's a bit where he does metallica so you'll like it Mm. um and I did sort of say, well, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to like something. Um, but actually, I introducing, I quite like, <laughs> I right. would say. Yeah. I quite like introducing. I prefer Private Press. Um, but those are the only two DJ Shadow albums I'd heard up to this point. Though. Me too. Ah. Funnily enough, Funnily I, enough. Um, yeah, I really liked introducing and I really liked the Private Press mm. um, when they were out. And then I've just sort of not really gone back to DJ Shadow. A bit like Uncle actually where yeah, you know, i got the yeah. second uncle album and i didn't really like it so much so i just sort of dropped off and i dropped off on a lot of that stuff and i ended up yeah. listening to different types of electronic music or different types of hip-hop or you know and then going well i'll just listen to extreme metal instead it did feel very time and place didn't it yeah it did it did I'm and honest. um and that's why um first half of this record which is more of the kind of classic um sounding dj shadow material first time i put it on i was very very disappointed Mm -hmm. i was very first sort of i listened to about half an hour of it and i was just like i'm going to come back to this because it's it's not good oh really okay Uh, um it sounded there were two things that i thought that were screaming out at me one it was really pretentious and two that it sounded really dated Um, i certainly think the latter um i found it about as inoffensive as the coldplay record yeah. <laughs> to be honest it, and, and and certainly the first listen or the first couple of listens uh it was just kind of um in the background and very little was was standing out to me um, there's lots of bits of there's something called juggernaut which kind of sums up the first um half of the first part of the first bit of the album um which is full of noise, which I you would think I would like, but it doesn't mm. do anything. Mm. It doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. It doesn't evoke anything no. really, nope. and it just seems really quite happy with itself without really doing anything. Yeah. And I was like, you could argue that for a lot of this record, couldn't you? Yeah, you could, to be honest. And it's um, that just sort of sums up that part of the record. I mean, going back to it um, a couple more times. Speaking of the first half. You know, I actually thought intersectionality has got a sort of like this weird early 80s disco vibe to it, which I thought was actually quite cool. Interestingly, that's one of the few songs which sounds a little bit more modern now by being retro. Yeah. Because there's a sort of synth wavy element to it. Yeah. Or you could argue it's synth wave. I mean, I think it's done far, far better by name any synth wave artist yeah, working yeah. now. But, you know, but, at least I was like, oh, actually, that is yeah. a bit different. I, I, I thought intersectionality was okay. Yeah. Was, uh, okay. There's a song called Rosie, which is one of the few ones with vocals in the first half. And actually, yeah. as a sort of pop song like i don't know fat boy slim or something it's actually quite cool it's kind of retro it's got that big beat thing that he Mm -hmm. that was big in the 90s um it's got a kind of jazz hook to it yeah and yeah it's got the kind of cut and paste aesthetic of his early material with a bit of kind of wob 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 from the sort of modern era so i thought that managed to tick a few of the boxes of stuff that i like and and kind of bring it up, not maybe not completely up to date because that's obviously the dubstep thing is like, you know, the start of this decade, really. Um, Interesting that you say cut and paste, though, because one of the things that I think is um, so brilliant about introducing in the private press is the way in which it manages to uh, 
bring these disparate elements together and make it flow so so well flow like a river i don't know why i'm obsessed with that at the moment um but it flows really really well and it just feels like like you could listen to introducing as just like one long song if you wanted to yeah Yeah, yeah. whereas this doesn't have a very good flow again it feels i mean i feel like i've just copy and pasted my notes from the coldplay review which i did not suspect would happen for this album but it feels really bitty Mm. i think i think it also you know i'm sorry to you know get on my post rock high horse here but i think it actually shows how difficult it is to write an instrumental album and keep it interesting yeah because this the first disc of this is 40 minutes long exactly 40 minutes it's really boring Mm. it's really boring and um I think it just goes to show how tough it is to make something um, sound like it's evolving and going to places and changing and interesting over a long period of time when you have no vocals. Mm. There's, yeah, I mean, there is, you know, a slim pickings for me on that first half. Yeah. I I like it more than I did the first time I listened to it because the first time I listened to it, I was like, this sucks. This is like just such a fucking weak, watered down, just you know blamange of what he used to do but you know um i have to say i never even thought it sucked i just thought it was very meh like like the yeah, gold play album yeah, i just yeah. thought no, it was very fair, like suppose, yeah. ugh, mm. you know there's a good piano part which really reminds me of uncle which kind of keeps coming through which starts on we are always alone it's quite nice quite minimalist um and that sort of refrain happens again through the album a couple of times more in the second half as well but yeah, the first half of it I don't like. I think for me, and we might disagree on this, to be honest. Um, we will. I think the second half is much better, but it's still not great. We definitely disagree. Okay. There's a few on here, like Rocket Fuel with De La Soul is excellent. Uh, I yeah, I quite like that. That sounds like Gorillaz. It sounds like kind mm-hmm. of classic, classic De La Soul, but updated. I think mm-hmm. it could fit snugly on a Gorillaz album, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Rain on Snow with Ghostface Killer and Inspector Deck is great. Oh, uh, I can't stand it. Really, I think it's got some great like lyrical um, couplets on that. Oh, I think I, the lyrics are the worst part. I do. You hate I, it. I, I, I just, like, I just put it's... "Rain on Snow." Oh dear, <laughs> I think it's dreadful. Okay, but it's got this little theme. It's got that kind of that hook, that kind of um, Dusty Springfield esque hook on it. Oh, I didn't realize that had a hook. Well, it's great then. In that case. No, no, I'm just saying. Like, no, I like I... the hook. I like okay. a hook, and I like the juxtaposition of the two, and it's quite a yeah. moody thing. I'm very happy um, for you. It's dreadful. Okay, there's a song <laughs> called Jojo's World uh, featuring a dude called Stro, um, which I think is, which is about suicide, uh-huh. uh, and I think is probably the best song on the entire record. I think the fact that I've listened to this second half of the record four or five times, and I didn't even, um, uh, it didn't even occur, it didn't even register that there's a song about suicide on it. it says it all, really. Doesn't really? It? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that song a lot. That could that that's got a. I mean, it's absolutely nowhere near as good at all, but it could have been something that would fit on the clipping album but they probably would have gone this isn't good enough yeah <laughs> um, yeah uh, but it's got a similar sort of vibe i think to i'm it. offended that you're mentioning clipping compared to this yeah but i'm just talking <laughs> yeah, about i know like, what you mean, I know what you the, mean. The, yeah. yeah um and i quite like the opening song with naz and pheromonic but it does sound like it's just come out of the image it could be pitch shifter it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds that like fucking dated to be honest yeah um well again, a lot i think a lot of the second record sounds very very dated it does it sounds like kind of 90s i mean listening do you know what listening to the second half of this record made me <laughs> it made me appreciate the jpeg mafia record a little bit more mm. um i don't i still don't like the jpeg mafia record but it made me go oh actually that jpeg mafia record is is a far more contemporary and far more modern mm. and actually a far more interesting record than i realized when you compare it to to this yeah uh, i mean there's a song in it called um like for a kind of when he a sort of more modern thing there's, a, there's something called small colleges which is a kind of proper just really bog standard really obvious it's like soundcloud rapper yeah. track yeah and that feels like you know with the here we go trying to do i'm i'm contemporary i can keep up with the contemporary mm. kids and that and it's just it's it's really boring mm. and i expected something really angry and cool with run the jewels i mean people go on about run yeah. the jewels and you know yeah but it's okay it's yeah. got a kind of not quite a good sample of an early soul song but mm. and it's about a dog or something um <laughs> 
but yeah, it's not but very good. But it's not good. as good as Blink 182's Fuck a Dog, is it? <laughs> no. And <laughs> I mean, again, the only other one from the, the album that I think sort of stands out is uh, the title track because it's got um, Samuel T. Herring from Future Islands on it, who's mm. got a really, really distinctive voice. Mm. And I think that is such a massive part of why the second half doesn't work. There are rappers on here who have distinctive flows and distinctive voices, but there are also a lot of people where you're just like, you are, you could have been, like you say, plucked from any point from fucking Def Jam 1996, do you know what yeah. I mean? And just like b- dug up from a B-side from yeah. somewhere. And then you get this guy, this guy with his weird kind of <laughs> voice from future. And you go, yes, finally someone yeah. with an actual distinctive voice. I don't even think it's a particularly good song, but it was just, yeah. hit. oh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't seeing who was who on the record. I wasn't paying attention to who the guests were when I was first listening to it. And straight away I went, Future Islands guy. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty enviable list of um, yeah, it's got some people, people, you know. I, I mean, like Pusha I, T's on it Pusha as well. Pusha T, Run the Jewels, De La Soul, Ghostface Killer, Nas. You know, I just, I just, I just wrote down like some of the ones that I knew. Mm. <laughs> and, and you know, oh, there's a whole a bunch more. There's a whole, that's not even half of them, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it, it sounds surprisingly flat considering there's all those guests and, on it. And also, I mean, it's called Our Pathetic Age and it is it's a guy who's quite old moaning about social media. Yeah. It? It's doing the thing that profits are raised it's in. Rumbling. I mean, so much of it. Yeah. So much of it is like, I bloody don't like Snapchat. And the thing is, is a lot of these rappers coming from people who probably have like 2 million people following them on Instagram and who use that all the time. It seems a bit weird. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, there's an interlude on it called, I am not a robot. And it's going, Oh, if you, if you hear it on the radio, it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. It's like, Come on, man. We yeah. all this shit. Like again, well, most, you know, like, most don't kids listen are, to the man. The most kids are probably are, going, "What the fuck's a radio?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like I just, you know, this has been done. This has been yeah. like it feels really. It made this album made me feel really old. In the same way as like listening listening to like a new when Motorhead would release an album in like two thousand and thirteen or something, and I'd go, "Oh yeah, new Motorhead," and you hear it, and they'd be quite like good still. And you go, oh, it's recognisable as Motorhead, but oh, they sound a bit old, don't they? Mm. they sound a bit sort of tired, like, oh, you know, still Motorhead, great. Yeah. But maybe that's to be going, I wonder if young people think that as well. <laughs> and this is what I listen to it. And when I'm going like, oh, I quite like this one, I'm like, do I? Or is yeah. this just, you know, if I played this to like my 14-year-old cousin or something, would you be like, what is this granddad? Fucking hell. I imagine so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I'm not well, I'm not well, um, uh, well, researched no i don't know much about this kind of thing but even i was like this is old school yeah. and stuff yeah. um just to say some nice things about the second half record because i haven't said anything nice about it yet um i thought dark side of the heart had a nice ish cinematic orchestra type feel to it yeah. but then at the same time i'd find it difficult to recommend it when the band like the cinematic orchestra exist and um urgent important please read i thought was vaguely interesting for a bit but it does outstay its welcome at yeah, five and really a half does. minutes yeah. if it was three and a half minutes i'd be like that's a really good track but no that's it yeah it's a shame this i mean a lot yeah, of the reviews have said you, you have to slog through a lot the reviews haven't been uber positive but they haven't been uber negative no, i think we've been, been more negative about it than most definitely of the yeah um, I, it's, I can't remember the exact score of metacritic but it's 70 something which is generally mm. considered positive i think i read a review from i think it was rolling stone which said there's some good stuff on here but it's quite a slog to get to mm-hmm. and i think that's quite a fair comment i think yes. you know there's stuff on this record that i don't but i actually quite like mm-hmm. but there's a lot of stuff where i'm like at you know over an hour and a half runtime. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff which absolutely just does not need to be on here. Yeah, it's 92 minutes long and it doesn't feel... I, I mean, the first... <laughs> I mean, I'll give Coldplay the point here in that at least Sunrise and Sunset has some sort of theme and it fe- I can sort of see how they well, go together. And, yeah, just about. Uh, but the, the, I do think that the two halves of the record do sound relatively disparate from one another. Yeah, I think you could split them apart and have released them and people might not even know it's the same. Well, they probably wouldn't know it's the same artist because it sounds like DJ Shadow is behind it. But yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. Whereas but they don't it, feel like... 
could they don't feel connected those two parts really that's, other, that's other than I mean. the fact that they're like technology is bad yes exactly but then there are so many records doing that sort of thing that it's very difficult to make that feel connected i think yes correct so you know um yeah a shame because dj shadow back in the day was was really fucking cool yeah i you wanted know? to like this yeah and as, as i said i do like dj shadow yeah that i like yeah but i uh, i i really can't ever see me going back to this to be perfectly honest i prefer the coldplay record wow i don't think that but uh okay um our pathetic age by dj shadows out now just go back to bloody private just press in it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Private press, yeah. Uh, all right let's go to our second to last record it comes from sleep token it's called sundowning it's been out a few weeks now but we haven't really had a chance no, to get it hasn't it's week out this half? week it's out this week proper no yeah. oh, maybe on physical it's out um no they've been releasing a single from this album every every week week for flipping ages so everyone's basically heard the whole thing more or less um and they do it at like sunday it's very cold play they do it at like 4 a.m when the sun is at its highest point and the third week of the solstice and all this stuff because sleep token are very kind of um pretentious (laughs) <laughs> caught up in their mystical whistical ways they like to call their gigs um well they they say come and worship don't they and all that sort of thing and you have um a lot of time that. oh yeah oh they flipping love it know that flipping yeah because fl- because uh, they're Who like the fuck do you think they are? worshiping some sort of uh god or worship something tribute? Like no it's i i mean i would worship worship and tribute because it's a fucking great mine. record just crushed your nut. Balls against my leg. <laughs> <Lovely> <laughs> you watch a YouTube channel, you'll see that exact moment. So oh, worth lovely. tuning in for Good. that. Yep. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean... So it's uh, a debut album from the much-hyped uh, tech mask wearers. That's what I'm calling them, because I don't really know. They wear masks, and it's quite techy. I already have an issue with this. Do you? Go on. Yeah. Um, and actually, this Only is gonna... one of them has got a mask? No, no. No, no, no. They all have masks. Okay um my uh, so sleep token get um put in with tech scenes all the time Mm. and they get put in you know they get put on tech bills and they are definitely called a tech band by a lot a lot a lot of people Mm -hmm. um and i think this is happening with a few bands as well another band i would point this towards is uh, probably loathe loathe get put in with a lot of uh, tech kind of Mm -hmm. stuff i don't think either of those bands are tech bands at all i think what unless the genre is changing I mean, well i think the reason why they're put in with those bands is because they have a tech guitar tone mm-hmm. aka my sugar's guitar tone um bong, 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 bong. that sound isn't it? i do apologize my co-host is having a fit <laughs> um but uh yes um i uh, am and- fit more like That is that is more offensive than the Slayer film. Yeah, that is. was a lot more offensive than yeah. the Slayer film. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> um, um, but I, I, I think um. I think this is beginning to happen quite a lot. I mean, maybe you could argue that that's the tech scene opening up um, a bit more. But um, there, I, I, I don't mean this as a criticism particularly. But there's nothing on this album which is particularly sort of difficult to play. It's all like, and hence for me, it's not a tech record. Yeah, but I would say a lot of those tech bands, it's all about. Uh, there, there's the thing is, is if you actually go to something like Tech Fest, you'll see there's basically two types of these bands. Those ones who just want to go 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 and go for ages, and ones who do the kind of atmospheric, atmospheric floaty tech. Atmospheric is a nice word. Atmospheric, yeah, <laughs> atmospheric floaty <laughs> tech stuff, right? Which is not really necessarily heavy, and it's all a little bit more subdued. And I can see how someone would look at Sleep Token and go, oh, yeah, they're a bit more like one of them. Yeah, this is the other point where I'm sort of going to disagree with you, but um, I feel like we probably should move on to that in a little bit. Um, yeah, I I, I've, I, mean, I will say I've um, Tech Fest isn't the example that I was going to use, but I went to Europe last quite recently and saw Sleep Token there. And um, for me, they were one of the best bands on the bill not saying loads but they were um and um they certainly got one of the best responses of the entire weekend and certainly i will say that the tech world is embracing them in a, a pretty incredible way actually 
Um, and uh, I've seen this band live a number of times now because I'm very interested in them. Um, but I have to say, and it's probably been reflected if you've been listening, you know, regularly, um, my reviews of them have varied quite a bit. Um, sometimes I think they've been absolutely elegiac and amazing. The gig at the St Pancras Old Church last year um, springs to mind, which sold out in uh, something ridiculous, like 17 seconds. And there were people from all over Europe there. There were people like talking in different languages, <laughs> hence them being from different places like in Europe. Album. Brexit. Um, and um, all that sort of thing. And it was an amazing atmosphere and just, just people, people having traveled that far for this show just made it like really spectacular. It was, it was absolutely amazing. And actually even Euroblast was pretty impressive seeing all these sort of um, Germans who'd never seen this band just totally won over by something that they'd not really seen before. I think um, the reason why, in my opinion, this band are getting a lot of hype, as you said, and a lot of um, a lot of kudos, I suppose, at the moment, and a lot of love, and they really are getting a lot of love, is because I think they do do something quite different from those atmospheric bands, as we're going to call them. <laughs> <laughs> and the difference for me is how much more dynamic they are i think the floaty floaty bits are far more floaty floaty and uh subdued and chilled and i mean actually second mention for them but they reminded me certainly when i first heard sleep token i sort of described them as the cinematic orchestra meets my sugar which no one as far as i was aware had ever really done before i didn't think anyone had ever gone that soft to that heavy within the dynamics of one song and I, I, I think finding bands that do that um, over and over again is quite rare. I mean, you could argue Devin Townsend does it over a career, mm. but I don't know. Does he do it on one record? I mean, maybe in bits, but, you know, I, I, I don't I, I think that is why people are really responding I think in the tech scene, I think you could probably write, you could be right that they are more uh, dynamically interesting than a lot of the bands in the tech metal world. But I think with all due respect to a lot of those bands, that isn't really that difficult, to be honest. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I will concede that. and mm. But I will concede also that, that for me, that's why they were a real standout and a real highlight at Euroblast, because mm. it was like, oh, well, finally I can see something that. a bit different. I can see that for you know? sure. I mean, for me... This is a mix of metal, modern rock, a bit of tech, tone, tonally. Yeah, certainly tonally. And yeah. modern pop, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soul. Um, I think there's soul in here. Yeah. Because uh, I think I think the vocalist, whoever it is, because uh, it's all, uh, sounds all like mysterious. He, do you know who he sounds like? Go he on. sounds like Mike Juice from Leather Than Atlantis. He sounds... I would be like, if you told me that this was the geezer from Atlantis, but just he was really sad. <laughs> I'd go, oh, well, he is sad, isn't he? But he is the same. He's got exactly the same. I think it is Mike Juice from Atlantis. Okay. I can I can categorically tell you that it isn't because I've met him. Okay. But, uh... but have you seen him sing on that album? No. Well, uh, but, on but it's, this album, it's, it's not Mike it's Juice. Mike Juice from Atlantis. Okay. Wait, all right, okay, but it sounds he's he's got he's got the exactly the same voice as him. Is that he's, a bad thing? No, 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 I'm just saying that's who he, he reminds me of. He really, really reminds me of Mike Juice from Atlantis. He I think he's shake it. I have to say, I think you know, I I, I agree with all of those things in terms of I, the Mike Juice thing. I'm not 100 percent sure, but but the, in terms of like the pop stuff and all that kind, of, yeah, there's loads of pop in this. And um, in terms of his voice, I think he's got a brilliant voice. Personally, I I, I think he has a brilliant um way of uh, hmm. uh doing emotional sort of sentiment without it being too schmaltzy i i i'm gonna have to immediately disagree with you there immediately uh -oh. i'm afraid now okay i was gonna add a little bit more to that no no, you go for it but just yeah. while we're on that i absolutely categorically cannot disagree cannot agree with that uh -oh. uh, <laughs> sorry in a no, no of course that's fine in a vocal sense um unfortunately i think some of the lyrics 
put it into schmaltz a little bit. Mm. And there are a few, I mean, I understand why they do it. There's a few sort of repeated phrases on the, there's a few repeated phrases. There's a lot of repeated phrases on the record. There's a lot of moments where they, I think the thing, the thing that I've been worried about with Sleep Token is them getting stuck into a um, cycle. Um, the first two EPs, one and two, uh, I got really excited about um, because I loved that sort of juxtaposition between the cinematic orchestra esque stuff going into the Meshuggah guitar tones. Certainly, mm-hmm. I just thought it was a really cool dynamic, and I'd not really, not really heard that before. Um, what concerned me about the EPs is um, the song structure of every single song was identical, i.e. Uh, the first three minutes is like wibbly wobbly cinematic orchestra soulful stuff mm. and then it, a big chuggy riff comes in or maybe a little bit of like uh, weird modern instrumentation mm-hmm. noise stuff and then it goes all heavy and stuff like that i'm pleased to report that uh i don't think you could accuse every song on this record taking that song structure not every single song though. not every single song i think there are still quite a few of them that do yeah and i do think that they do get stuck in the same ideas again and again and again Mm -hmm. a little bit too much this album is 12 tracks long and it's 55 minutes long and if it if every single song genuinely felt different from one another i don't think it would be too long but they just don't there's a there's a lot of songs which feel well, that song is just an inferior version of the song which that which came three tracks earlier or whatever, mm. in my opinion. Mm. What do you want to say about it? <laughs> um, I quite like the song Sugar. That's got one of the sugar. sugar. Yeah, it's Taste kind of floaty. And it's like... I'm quite surprised you like that one. Really trying probably a bit too hard to be cool but i can imagine it being played in a club it being quite cool yeah um, it's good live that i one. do like the heavy song there's one heavy song in it called yeah, gods. gods yeah that's a good song i, I like it mm. but i am like okay. so here's the thing really because i don't hate this record mm. i don't think this is a bad record at all um i can see why it's going to be big um yeah. i just can't necessarily see why it's going to be bigger than any other things other than that they're wearing masks to be perfectly honest um, Do you not that see- song Gods is no better than a Heart of a Coward song. It's no better than a Berry Tomorrow song. It's a decent metalcore song, but it's not any better than anything that was on that last Heart of a Coward album that you said was all generic and blah 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 blah. It's exactly the same. It hits hard. I, mm, it I, I don't. Hit I don't disagree with you, but within the context of the album, it hits harder because of everything that's around it. Maybe, maybe, but that's because you know. There's songs on this, like there's a song called Levitate, which is mm. way too sugary for my liking. Mm. It's an actual ballad. It's, I mean, it, it's like Justin Bieber. It's quite like a few. It's quite a few guitars. actual ballads on here. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Sugar is one where you go, well, that's really catchy. And it's, you know. Um, I'm surprised you like Sugar, actually. I thought that would really irritate you. No, because it's, it's just a fucking full blown pop song. And it mm. kind of, I like it. You know, I can't help myself for liking it, but I, I do quite like it. I mean, there's a, there's a song called Dark Signs that even has that ew, ah, ooh, ew, like a pop hook that every single fucking pop band or pop act in the world has been using for the last six or seven years. Mm. And it's just like, no, thanks. Mm. I No, I d- no. Um, Take Aim, there's a song called Take Aim, which is like the soundtrack to a rom-com. I can imagine them playing that at the Brits. It is so soppy. I it's love, so I, fucking soppy. I love Take Aim. Well, I think it might be my favourite song on I the mean, album. I mean, this to me, I don't think this is a bad record. Mm. It's not a rubbish, it's not a rubbish, or like, you know, the, the DJ Shadow album is very disappointing. It's not a good, yeah. not a well-made record. It's yeah. dated. It's not a good record. It, yeah. This is not that. The Coldplay album is a complete embarrassment, uh, you know, and is right. bland and boring and, and this is not that either right no. um this is just a record this is this is the new bring me the horizon album with someone who can sing <laughs> do you know what i mean this is this well that's is, a remarkable improvement on ammo already yeah, this is the weekend with riffs this is tesseract if they sold out this is take all the electro bits from zelanada give them some pop hooks and a sugar riff 
And that's what it is. He sounds like a dude from Atlantis. It's all a bit serious. It's all a bit po-faced. It's not bad. It's just quite overwrought. It's quite mm. similar. Uh, they've been sort of, and that's absolutely fine. I think None they, of that makes it a bad record. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to understand in my head why people are talking about this band as if it's the second coming of Christ. Because to me, <laughs> like, there's there's nothing there's nothing that makes them stand out from the pack at all. But I think it is. I think it is. Um, bringing all of those elements together and putting them into one package. I think it is bringing, you know, there's nothing quote unquote original here, but I, I would be really hard pushed to think of many artists or bands who um, use such extreme dynamics who go from such lovely floaty pass ethereal passages to that really heavy gent-esque guitar tone um that's all right uh I, I don't think they're as floaty as this i don't think they ever get as floaty i don't think they ever get as mainstream pop as this no well quite well that's, that's what that's I would say. part of my that's part of my point yeah but what i would like for me i i do not want to listen to um kind of bland mainstream pop and that's where this record kind of makes me go. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. But I think when you're talking about a cinematic orchestra, mm. I think that is very misleading. I think the Do we- you? I think the weekend. <laughs> I think fucking hell. I don't know. Maybe like Katy Perry and Rihanna and Justin Bieber is more what I would say. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't. I don't. No, I don't think it's that syrupy and. I, no really i pff, there were moments where it's too syrupy for me and too syrupy for my palate i don't think it's i mean sometimes katy perry makes me there, there's some great katy, katy perry yeah. songs to be katy clear. perry's early material. current katy where katy perry exists now and where i'd say the majority of the sort of thing you would see on like do a leaper or something yeah right I don't really see this being it's just that this is a Do you uh, Leaper don't have gent guitars? Well, yeah, and then at the end they go gah, gah, right? hmm. I mean but but I I think you, you asked a, you asked a question, which is why why are people going mad for this? I, I think that's the answer. Yeah, I think it, it I think it helps that mm. it's packaged up in this kind of uh anonymous who are these people they're no one you've heard of uh masks kind of robes kind of thing um the worship him all that kind of you know you could cynically say marketing bollocks i guess it kind of is um i think that stuff helps i don't think it's solely down to that um because to be honest before i knew all about that kind of thing when i fir first heard their their second ep was the first thing i heard and just having three songs and it being like 16 minutes long and having just that small part of it i made me go oh my god this is excellent and i got really excited to them but to the point i contacted their management and i was like I don't know what we can do with this, but I want to do something about it, mm. you know, because I think this is really exciting. I will say, I mean, that was going on two years ago. I was at the independent at the time and my excitement has dissipated quite a lot in that time due to a number of factors, seeing them live um, and sometimes be, as I say, absolutely elegiac and amazing and sometimes be quite disappointing. I will say, sorry to sound like a broken record, but it's usually when um, they have more elements on backing track that I'm like, Ugh. the St. Pancras show, for example, they had like seven musicians on stage and they had three backing singers and it was just fucking glorious. Mm. It was wonderful. And I do... I keep seeing them like one moment they'll have like a keyboard player and then the next time I see them, the keyboard player's gone. And I'm like, sometimes I feel like it's a bit like one step forward, two steps back for them live. It's really up and down. I like Paul um, Abdul opposites attract. That song. That's what meant. <laughs> Just like that, yeah. yeah you know. um, that is a heavier song than a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, I th but I think, I, I do think that that is the reason I, I, I mean, yeah it probably is it's just reason. that i really really fucking despise that 
sort of homogenized you know basically kind of cut and paste um you know just everybody does that style exactly the same every single fucking pop star it all is produced the same it Mm. all sounds the same and i don't want to hear any of it Mm. ever Mm. and you know if that's uh, now you put it like that i go okay yeah so basically it's really really awful bland modern pop music but then a sugar riff comes in at the end yeah metal fans are going to dig that if they you know if they also want something modern and it's ironic i guess that i've just been going oh the dj shadow album sounds really old and dated and blah blah blah. and then with something which sounds very very zeitgeisty and current i don't like that either so um <laughs> difficult man to please can't aren't you? wait to die really <laughs> <Renfrew>. um <laughs> and um I've, I've and, um, yeah, but, too, but you know, honest. but I don't think this is a bad like I just to be really clear, I don't think this is a bad record, mm. and I think there are a few songs that I quite like. I think there's some songs in it which I really can't stand. There's, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 there's songs on here that I love, and okay. there's songs on here which I'm like, Meh. Mm. it feels like quite a slog. I have to say, it's too long. Yeah, and as and as I say, you said it all sounds very similar. I think that's going a step too far, but but I think they get stuck in the same ideas. I think I think there are like four really key ideas that they keep going back to on this record, and they just do different versions of them. Mm. And uh, it, 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 you know, I think twelve tracks is, as I said, too long. Fifty five minutes is too long. I think if this had been uh, like eight and 40 minutes i'd probably be praising it to the hilt to be honest okay um that's fine i mean (laughs) you know that's 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 fine i just you know uh i've got i think it's really interesting though i think it's an interesting record see i don't think it is Hmm. i don't think it's interesting at all i think i think I, I, I just from the point of view that you know you can you can see it as I, I will say that sleep token aren't a genuine hybridization from the point of view of like actually we've talked before about mixing two genres together i don't know why i'm doing this motion You're mixing for the YouTube. It. i'm mixing it um but then also putting part a uh genre part b genre and just sort of clipping them together mm. and this is definitely more, more the like latter. dub war like you know, dub yeah. war would have like yeah, a yeah, reggae yeah, bit yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. A, a metal bit yeah. and skin dread then went well we can see if we can sort of try and actually together put them together yeah uh, yeah and, that, and you know maybe they will get to the point in the future where they find a way to kind of combine those things i would argue there are a bunch of bands who have kind of already done that over the years um uh so yeah but mm. he does sound like a good guy from Lion Atlantis, so that's good. <laughs> if you miss Lion Atlantis um, and you like Meshuggah, well, probably not Meshuggah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Whilst, they, whilst <laughs> it is Meshuggah's guitar tone, I wouldn't necessarily yeah. recommend this to Meshuggah fans because like, the riffs are massive, very basic. I don't think, yeah. I, I, I'm not strictly saying that as a, as a bad thing, but they are, they are. Oh yeah, the power. Chords. It's new metal. It's new it's metal. New, yeah, yeah. Like it's riffs. very basic. New metal riffs come in at the end. I mean, yeah, you know, like know. you can understand. I understand. I guess I understand why they're being talked up. It's just you know, it's just another thing where you go, yeah, sure. You people who like mainstream music have really fucking awful taste. <laughs> um, when there's so many other, you know, there are so many other bands yeah. that you could yeah, get yeah. excited about, and I just don't understand why you would be getting that excited about this band. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, they're fucking Black Peaks are around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're going to pick this over Black Peaks. Come on. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's out now. Sundowning by Sleep Token. Uh, if you're interested, I suppose, I suppose it is probably worth a listen. Um, <laughs> Let's I think our, it's worth listening let's to. Let's do a, our last record. Oh, thank God. Something thank good. God for Bellevue Days. It can't possibly go wrong ever. That should be what this fucking <laughs> <laughs> this episode's called. <laughs> After kind of universally, for me, disliking everything that we've fucking spoken about this week, from Motley Crue to Coldplay to horrible grindhouse to really <laughs> dated hip hop to really sappy modern pop music bellevue days have arrived thank fucking god i've been into this guys uh, these guys they're a quartet from croydon i had my own and basically since their debut ep which dropped in late 2015 uh sad boy mm-hmm. oh and mate there's, there's a song on there called ripped jeans 
You oh, just you just cool. say ripped jeans to me, and I've got the chorus in my head. Yeah, it's great. It's, what? what I, mm, it go feels on. like a long time. Uh, it Bel- really does uh, that, that we've been waiting for a full length Bellevue Days. It record. really does. I don't quite know why it is that we have been waiting this long. But, I don't either. Uh, no. But here it is. Um, as I said, it's called "It Can't Possibly Go Wrong Ever." And um, very much in the vein of a type of music which I think has flourished quite a lot this year. We've had Dinosaur Pile Up, we've had um, The Menzingers, we've had uh, Pup, we've had Puppy, we've had Nervous. There have been uh, <laughs> we've had the, the Weezer album. Um, <laughs> we pick whichever one of the two brilliant Weezer albums came out this year. Um, but there have been a lot of just really simple, heart on sleeve, earnest hook filled melodic poppy rock music that's come out this year and it's been really really good great rock bands with a slightly emotional edge mm-hmm. some might say emo but i wouldn't want to give the wrong impression because yeah. this is not my chemical romance but yes, yes. It's heart, kind of, heart and know, sleeves actually a better way of putting yeah it, and, and brit rock i guess kind yeah. of like for me bellevue days exist somewhere between jimmy Eat world and ash yeah um all of the bands you've mentioned i agree with i would also just throw in can't swim and actually yeah. the, the band the band Although can't swim's ep is like a fucking fury fest isn't it sure sure yeah. but yes they but, are but can't swim i yeah. would throw in uh, the band bellevue days most remind me of and the reason i fucking love them is because they remind me of tellison um personally oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we brought them in yeah yeah um, um and i adore tellison you were a bit ho-hum about that um record that i brought in for you but um i i think yeah i, I think I think they are closer to the sort of telesons and nervouses of the world just because there's something very, very, very British about Belgian days. I was going to say days. really British. Really British. Mm. Um, Which is why, kind of why I said Ash, although Ash aren't British, really, are they? They're not strictly British. Yeah, and they don't, Ash don't have the heart on sleeve thing quite in the same mm. manner well, as what, what said, we're talking that, about. Like sort of seesaw between just the, sh- the fucking punch the air horayness of Ash and the kind of slight, the very anthemic and melodic but still quite, oh, I'm hurting of Jimmy Eat World. I yeah. think that's yeah. kind of what these what these guys are. But yeah, it's very a very British way to be doing, I guess you'd call it emo. But no, yeah, like you say, Nervous is a, is a great shout. Um, this is 11 tracks. This is like 35, what, minutes. 35 minutes long. Yep. Um, after the fucking crap we've had to listen to this week, uh, this is such a fucking joy to put this record on. Yeah, um, it's, br- it's it's brilliant. It's really good. It's really really good. Um, if you're a fan of any of the stuff that we've been talking about so far, if you are a fan of you know the the Wonder Years, the Jimmy Eat World, mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know the, the any of those bands that, that we've, we've spoken about previously, then I think you will fucking love this band yeah um they're they're wonderful i mean they've shown so much promise with um it was uh sad boy and rose hill those eps wasn't it yeah um both of i i i will say the first time i heard this record um i wasn't disappointed i haven't been disappointed with this record for a single millisecond but i did think that both sad boy and rose hill were more immediate maybe i thought this album took a little a few more sort of listens to yeah, permeate. I think bits of it do. Yeah, yeah. bits of it. Do. Yeah, I think um, there's some like like shotgun straight out of the way as a bang. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, that's straight in. Sad, sad, absolutely. Uh, just straight away. Sleep do. repeat again is, yeah. is fucking massive, um, but I think it's it's got a nice sort of. Um, uh, it does a nice balance between kind of like throwing those hooks straight at you, but also giving you stuff to. Um, listen to and appreciate on repeated listens maybe mm-hmm. uh, and does all of that in 35 minutes it's fucking awesome um there's that song oh juska juska no idea it's just a brilliant like slacker anthem mm. um I, it, I mean in a way there's not loads to say about it apart from it's just 11 fucking great songs yeah i mean it's the best album that we're talking about this comfortably the best even though i will agree with that Mm. me and me quite liking the sleep token album this is comfortably the best album we're talking about this week Um, lapping the competition this week for me absolutely like not 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 with its tongue (laughs) but like if it was a race (laughs) it's lapping it oh dear (laughs) um there's a Vocals come from like three members of the band, which mm. give it this really dynamic, kind of diverse sort of feel to yeah. it. There's a bit where one of the vocalists says shite, which makes it really sound British. Yeah. It's uh, it's just excellent. Sympo- they remind me a bit of Symposium sometimes as well. Oh, well, you know what I mean? Like, just like, 
Oh, that's you know that symposium with just Will sort of, from uh, Hell is for Heroes is old just band. Rat, they rattle, don't they? They rattle yeah. along. Like yeah. It's just, you know, it's not, it's poppy, but it's not, it, whereas Sleep Token feels, you know, very, very precise. That's not a criticism of that particularly, but it's very, very precise. This feels, you know, ramshackle and thrown together yes. and live and like yes. a real band. And it's the first yes. thing, it's the only thing really we've had this week in terms of the albums where you just go, this was probably played live. Yeah. Like broken the, old like Fender Stratocasters. Yeah. You know, with a couple of strings missing or whatever. And it's just like... Oh. I think that's the really key thing, isn't it? The hooks are really poppy, mm. but the structures of the songs don't particularly feel poppy because, you know, the second verse might be completely different, played in a completely different way to the first verse, or the band just might sort of drop out suddenly to... Um, to emphasize a lyric or something like that and and it's excellent sort of three minute three four minute pop songwriting but done with almost non-traditional not even song structures but just just ways of telling the story or telling the so i mean that's why they remind me of tellison a lot mm. and nervous to a degree mm. i think tellison do it a lot to be honest but um yeah, wonderful, wonderful band. I really don't, good. don't really know good. why we've had to wait this long, as no, you say. Shame, but, but, but it's here, been worth waiting for. I also yeah. want to say, take heed of this fucking warning, Coldplay. The last song on the track is called Lily. Don't be listening. It's one minute long. It's exactly one minute long. It's actually, in terms of what gets played, it's only about 50 seconds of music, Yeah. right? It's an acoustic song, just an acoustic guitar with a voice, and that's it. And it feels like an actual song it changes yes, the dynamic of the record that's true it changes that it feels like something which is necessary to the music it's it not doesn't feel tacked just on tacked on no nope. sure oh, we've got just do a, some noises for 45 mm -hmm. 50 mm -hmm. seconds or whatever yep. it feels like an actual song and yeah and <laughs> when you compare it with the way that shit gets tacked on as and it, to justify itself on that Coldplay record um th this massively shows it up on their debut record so you know there you go. Bellevue Days. Uh, um, they're very, very, very good. And you should go and listen to it. It is called It Can't Possibly Go Wrong Ever. And it might not for them. I hope it doesn't. I'd like them to get some. Yeah, I've been saying for a few years now that. Yeah. I'd sort of, I to be honest, I'd kind of forgotten they were banned because yeah. it'd been a long time since anything had come out and yeah. I was expecting an album and it doesn't feel like there's been a lot of momentum for them. But hopefully this is the beginning of that momentum. Renfrew, we haven't done trade-off for fucking ages. No. So let's do it. Okay. Right. Um, last time going back weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, I gave you God Hand by Brand of Sacrifice, the New York crew... Uh, who make a kind of slam deathcore band. It's their debut album, and it came out this year. Yeah, it's very recent. Isn't it? mm. I haven't really brought it into you because it came out this year or because I wanted to do anything sort of as a catch-up or anything. I just brought it into you because I thought it was really fucking funny. <laughs> so, and you always moan about the genericness of a lot of metalcore and death metal bands and deathcore yeah. bands that I stick yeah. up for. So yeah. I thought, let's give Renfrey one who are hilariously over the top yeah and here we are yeah do you know what though because, you like you like it well you? because they're hilariously <laughs> over the top i really like because because <laughs> do again, you actually um i i mean look it's not going to become like my favorite record or anything like that but i thought there was some interesting kind of uh, god you might steady. you might throw something at me but i thought there was some interesting sort of code orangisms in this in in that like in the manner in that they went into different parts where i was like oh that's unexpected mm. um <laughs> i'm not saying it's as good as code orange to be no. clear um but it i just goes wee, 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 for 26 minutes yeah. apart from like no, 50 no, no, seconds no, no. in the middle no 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 there's there's a piano track towards the end there's the penalty no not the yes, penalty song okay. there's the the, the, I've been, yeah. You're okay. being quite facetious I, to I the own record, to your own record that you've brought in here. I know. Um, no, I like this a, a lot more than a lot of, I mean, if you will, serious straight deathcore bands, because I just think it's ridiculous. And it made me, it makes me laugh. And it is so OTT and so silly. You, you, you 
got it exactly right. It's 26 minutes long. So it's difficult to get bored of it. Yeah. I mean, they've they've timed... What I will say... The time is perfect. Is they have timed this <laughs> with expert precision. Yeah, yeah. Because if it was about four seconds longer... Yes. I would have thrown my computer out the window the first yes. time I listened to it. I do think... I do think yeah, I, I think the timing expert position is exactly right. I, th- I think it's, and you know, I'd say 20 minutes of the 26 minutes is that kind of stuff yeah. that you were talking about. But then the six... Sounds like, and the guitar tone, it sounds like a crisp packet being scrunched. Yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's utterly ridiculous and silly and stupid. But I think if you're going to go in that direction, then then run 10 miles in that ridiculous direction and I'm probably going to like it a lot more. Like, but this is this is because I I was kind of I thought you brought this in to be like, isn't this amazing? And I was like, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> do you just think this is utterly silly? And I, well, I I I mean, this has backfired quite badly actually <laughs> because I thought you'd go, well, God, this is so bad. And I go, right, well, next time we do job for a cowboy or something like that, who are clearly better musicians and are clearly have a better grasp and craft of. Yeah, they they are but they are better they are, i don't care what you say they are but like okay. technically speaking like on a purely taking all emotion out of it they are better i wasn't right? going to disagree i'm just struggling to remember job for a cowboy because they're also generic and boring oh, mate, genesis, but... um, uh, back in the day mate genesis when that came out it's a great record okie pokey give it to me on trade-off maybe okay um but i was like well <laughs> remember Remember the brand of sacrifice record, which is just someone going like, I like go, someone scrunching up a crisp packet and going over the top of it. Yeah, but it's but it's funny. <laughs> and it is absolutely it's really funny. Like I don't, I don't hate, like I don't hate it. I just the thought I got a kick out of the thought of you listening to it and going like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> I didn't Why? hate, I didn't but hate this actually, at all. No, I thought. I mean, I you know, I'm not going to be like, oh my god, album of the year material, but. No, I quite liked yeah, it. It's probably going to be my album of the year. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think right. it'll be like in the top two. It sounds like the sort of music you put on to sort of romance someone. It's weird, this, isn't it? Because I just sort of wonder what sort of person. Do you know what I mean? What A psychopath sort of... would probably. What sort of person would get really genuinely excited by this? Hmm. <laughs> You'd have to. Re- probably. You, last week you were going like, oh, you got to really like death metal. I mean, I think you have to. You have to love death metal to really love like the new Nile album. How would yeah. you have to feel about sort of slam and deathcore to be to, to, to say they were playing in London? Brand yeah. of sacrifice. Yeah. And going, like, I'm going. Well, pro- book pro- my ticket. Probably the same people who got enjoyment out of the Slayer film, I would imagine. Yeah, maybe. Um, but um, no, I don't know. There was something, as I say, it was just so OTT and so ridiculous. They're, they're one of the most over... I mean, I remember listening to people a few years ago, we talked about Oceano. You remember Oceano? Vaguely. Cool band. Vaguely. And people were like, they are the most ridiculously over the top, stupid deathcore band. Right. And I was like, oh, I have to listen to this. And I was just like, yeah, you know, it's, it's deathcore, but it's a bit more, like, it's a little bit sillier, a little bit mm-hmm. faster. And it's mm-hmm. completely like, the whole time. Mm-hmm. I mean, Oceano sound like fucking Neil Young compared to this. <laughs> Like <laughs> they're the most ins- ridiculous <laughs> band I've ever, like I've heard in a long, long, long time. Yeah, they're so ridiculous. Yeah, they're silly. They're silly. But I what like are you it. doing? <laughs> what, 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 what am I doing? I'm recording a podcast, doing? mate. What oh, what are they doing? doing? All right. Well, they're just going <laughs> into the microphone all the time, aren't they? <laughs> and it, I mean, again, I've said. I think is you know, if if they if they got rid of that and changed it to like entombed chainsaw guitars. I'd probably go, no, it is good. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> yes, I so, think you would. You know, I think you I'm would. Kind of, you got me banged to rights here, unfortunately. It's just, it sounds like it's recorded on a boss metal zone. Pedal. It does, yeah. It yeah. all sounds, uh, it's very, very odd. And you you know their t-shirts will have like massive purple lettering on. Yeah. And it'll probably say like, fuck off and die, bitch, on the back or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. That's and a basketball vest. And then a big hooped, like... <laughs> Big, big like flesh loops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't That'd stand those. And yeah, visible, probably. Visible tattoo core, as Andrew Neil calls it. Just get your hands and your neck tattooed, and nowhere <laughs> else. 
<laughs> Probably, but I just I I found this more entertaining than you know what whatever you would call straight ahead. I mean, I do you think, like it more than the last Chris Switch Engage album? Yeah, you're a slag. No, I liked it more because it, because it's more interesting and I think it's more dynamic than the last Kill Switch Engage album, and it has more interesting ideas on it. I'd like. I don't know if I would say it's better, but I liked it more. It's also half the length. No, it's yeah. not. It's, it's probably roughly shorter. Half yeah, it's shorter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that went really badly. Um, <laughs> that was brand sacrificed by God Hand. That's the, the return of trade off that nobody <laughs> wanted. Um, you gave me They Came From The Sun by your code name is Milo. Yeah, I did. The second album from the northeast based post hardcore band that was released in 2007 uh i was quite into your code name was milo when they came out i yeah. thought that's you know they bit of sixth bit of aconite thrill a bit of sixth interesting yeah okay. in terms of it was a wow i remember it being quite wild that was what it's I definitely was wild yeah, yeah yeah um i got um all roads lead to fault and i really liked it yeah their debut like, ep their debut brilliant ep, EP. thought yeah. it was very good i was not as keen on igneo when that came out to be honest neither was i and um I sort of dropped them like the rest of the world yes um it was a real shame because your code neighbors milo were really really uh well, I guess you could argue they were very hyped, couldn't you? They really? were, yeah. There's a By period, yeah. Kerrang and that lot. And, and um, well, Kerrang. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kerrang and Rock Sound. Yeah. Uh, I was just trying to remember if Rock Sound. Was Rock Sound a thing when? Yeah, of course it was. All right. Mm -hmm. Rock uh, Sound launched in like 1999. What? Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, Do you know on the front cover, first Rock Sound? You. Steggle. <laughs> no, no, and you know that's not true. <laughs> you too. No, it was the, it was the stereophonics. Was it now? Mm -hmm. Rock sound. Mm, Nineteen ninety nine though. Performance yeah, cocktails. they used to cover like yeah. proper indie music back then. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Go anyway. on. Um, yes, and there was a lot of hype around them, and then Ignoto came out, and it was produced by, wasn't it, uh, Gaga Garth? Mm -hmm. It was produced by, yeah. and it had, you know, um, uh, cover by Storm Thurgson and all that sort of thing, the Pink Floyd guys mm -hmm. and stuff for Pink Floyd and Muse and Biffy Clary, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, a little bit, it's, um, uh, it's a record with great moments, but I wouldn't call it a great record at all, Ignoto. I feel like they came from the sun is the record Ignoto should have been personally. And for me, it's always been clearly your code name is Milo's best moment. Okay. It's, I thought I'd listen to this because I don't know why, but I, I just thought I had because I had kind of forgotten about Ignoto. And I thought I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I got the first one and then it was this. But it wasn't. That one was in the middle. I was getting mixed up. So I thought I'd heard this album. I actually hadn't listen to this album sorry world um we might forgive you uh my initial impression was that it's certainly a lot easier to stomach in the main than the yes. earlier material yes uh that from what i remember my code name is milo. i haven't listened to your code name is milo for for a very 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 long time so i was going back from sort of like recall of like what did they actually used to sound like i'm sure they used to sound like you know like i say maddeningly odd sort of post rock or post yeah sort of post hardcore -y time signature. sort of post hardcore i mean there was never like tons and tons and tons of screaming they kept you guessing oh. constantly yeah. they yeah, were yeah. very much i mean they were in a genre of one really mm. they were doing i remember seeing them with biffy clyro once and thinking like oh this is probably the closest band that they are like and i have to stress early biffy clyro mm. um but uh they were very much their own thing, I think. I can't... Your code name is Milo would just kind of sound like your code name is Yeah, Milo, I always really. struggled where to place them sort of early on. And then the second album came out, as a, well, the first album, I should say, came out. And I was like, I remember getting it and being sort of a bit underwhelmed just because it did feel a bit safer than the album yeah, before, which is kind of why I dropped off. Uh, maybe what initially put me off because I wasn't, you know, not what I was interested in at the time. Um this album, uh, I was sort of surprised by what it sounded like, to be honest. Um, In terms of its safeness or yeah, melodicism? a little bit. I'm Impressed is a song that sort of feels like an indie rock and roll song, which is obviously very cool back then. And 
There's about much... leaving has a bit of that in there too. That kind of electronic indie that was all kind of the rage at the time. You know, we spoke about the bravery before, and I guess even you know the killers were sort of doing that sort of thing a bit as well. Yeah, well, I you're... mean they don't sound like the killers. Yeah. they sound more like the bravery than they do like the killers. But certainly, in terms of, there's a drum pattern that those bands use. There's a guitar tone that those bands use, mm. and I feel like this had this has a bit of that in it, or quite a lot of that in it, to be honest. There's a few like, but they write much better songs than the Killers or the Brave. Well, yeah, like Translate is really it's good. Fucking brilliant. Like yeah. I love the tra- the guitar parts. So there's a, that heavy bit, mm. that da, big da. heavy big riff, ba-dum, ba-dum. and then yeah, and then that kind of weird wiry guitar mm-hmm. part in between. Bits like that, I was like the way that juxtaposes. It's almost like a metronome. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I really like that. But a lot of it has got that beat from those indie bands. And I was like, fucking hell, I wonder if that's why they never really... Because to me, it would be odd to try and sell that to people who like Kerrang. Yes. Listening to it now, I was like, this feels very much of its time, to be honest. Oh. I think this feels very much of its time. Okay. Mm. I was a little bit disappointed with it, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, mate. Okay. Mm. Um, I adore this record, which is probably relatively self-evident because for me... Um, hmm, the whole sort of bravery connection, I, I don't fully see it, really. Are you too close to it from years and years of being with it that maybe you don't see Maybe. It? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But I also think it's an enormously, this is an enormously diverse record. There's loads going on on this album. Yeah, a, yeah there is. Um, a fair bit. I wouldn't. I'm not like loads. I think. In comp- I mean, actually, it's very diverse. It's com- it's it's, it's go- it goes all over the place. This album, like it's it's it's, and the songwriting is. I mean, it's it always goes somewhere unexpected. Like you never know. Certainly, the first few times you. Li- I mean, like the first dozen times I listened to this, I was like, I don't know where this is going to go next. Yeah, um, I think it goes. I know that's true. Mm. I'm not always sure that they do it to a particularly successful. So what there's a song in it called um, Take to the Floor. Mm. And I loved the start of it. I was like, this is great. And then this really weird midsection came in and it really put me off. And the rest of the song was really good. Mm. But I really didn't like the midsection. And I was just like, that just doesn't fit. And it seems to come out of nowhere. Mm. And some bands can do that and it flows or it makes sense or it's so such a sharp left turn that you go, Mm. and it sort of shakes you out of it. But you go, oh, it's good. But if the... And it wasn't even so much that it shook me out of it, but it wasn't whatever. It was just, I thought, that particular part, I was like, oh, no, don't do that. That's not even very mm. good. It was this kind of jaunty little bit that I was suddenly like, oh, don't like that. You just don't like jaunty, do you? I don't mind jaunty, but I, it was just like, mm, I, uh, it seemed like a step down from how I remember them in my mind. Okay, interesting. I mean, I think, um, I think the thing with... I think one of the reasons why they're such a difficult band to pigeonhole is because they never wanted to be pigeonholed. Yeah. The other album that they released was uh, Printer's Dead Volume 1. Um, unfortunately, there was never a Volume 2. But I think the idea was going to be... I think it was between Ignoto and... Um, uh, it was, yeah, They came yeah. from the sun. Yeah. And it was a mixtape compilation album, which had, like... I mean, you, you, you cannot put a genre on it. It had tracks with Ruben. It had tracks with like hip hop artists. It had tracks like, it was very, very diverse and odd and weird. Um, but uh, I don't think they ever wanted to be pigeonholed. And maybe perhaps that's why, you know, maybe maybe a lot of people who loved Ignoto li- listened to this and went, oh, this isn't what I was expecting. Therefore, I don't like it. But then I would also argue that those are the most exciting bands. And mm. for me, this is far more successful than Ignoto. A lot of it like sticks with me a lot better. I, I think I really like them because they're a really weird, obtuse band, but they do have hooks. And that's quite a difficult thing to do. And the only other th- band I could think of who were doing that really successfully at the time were uh, Biffy Claro. Mm. They're not as good as Biffy Clyro. Uh, no, but Biffy Clyro were the absolute pinnacle of yeah. that sort of thing. I mean, I guess so. What was coming time. out? So that were Puzzle being out about this time. Uh, Puzzle was probably when was this record? Is it, I thought two thousand seven. Was it two thousand seven? Um, then yeah, it yeah. was Puzzle, and I I actually saw them um at the Roundhouse support Biffy, um, and annoyingly I saw I saw your code names Milo a few times. But I only saw them um, on this record that one time supporting Biffy. 
uh, because um, they split up not long after this album came out. And um, it was probably the best time I ever saw them because Brilliant. they were playing these songs, I thought. I mean, Translate, as you said, in the roundhouse sounded fucking huge. Yeah, I can imagine that. It's a really good song. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Biffy Clyro were a pretty weird, obtuse act at that time even with i mean puzzle wasn't out at the point that they played the roundhouse show um and although they played shit tons of material off of it i remember they played like eight songs from it but you know biffy were an obtuse weird band and there were a lot of people watching your code of my name as milo kind of <coughs> going eh? yeah. um and i thought that was amazing like i just i was just like well, they're supporting one of the weirdest, most obtuse bands in the country, and you're confused by this band. That's that's absolutely incredible. You know, I I I, I really love this band. I wish they hadn't split up. I mean, Paul Mullen's gone on to do lots of really interesting projects and bits and pieces and stuff, which is worth sort of delving into as well. But um, yeah, I was hoping you'd like this a bit more. I, yeah, I didn't. I mean, to be honest, I also because I, I was like, are they? you know who's to blame for this <laughs> like is it me or them is it me or them i was right? you yeah, yeah um and i went back and le- and, and listened to all right Ro- all roads lead to fault right and that hasn't aged as well as i remember either i think all all roads lead to fault has aged worse than this has if i'm honest well i, I, mean, I like, love I was, that ep but i yeah i, I mean i it's... really liked it at the time and i found them very very exciting mm. and that's the only thing of theirs that i liked yeah. that i heard right yeah. so because i didn't really go for um i didn't really go for as i said i, I didn't go for like ignota uh mm. ignore ignoto i should say ignoto, um yeah. much at all mm. and then i kind of hoped that i'd be like oh because when you gave it to me i was like great your code name is milo yes that would be a band that i should have listened to or i haven't listened to for ages and i you know i had a lot of like love for them for a bit and I don't really know why I stopped listening to them. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't really care much for that record. But I was hoping that this would sort of reignite my love for them. And actually, it's made me go, mm, I'm not really sure I like them at all. Sorry. Poo. You know, even the EP, I was like, yes, yeah, it's, it's all right. But again, I think, I, I don't know. But I think whoever's been doing the fiddling, twiddling the knobs on them, have very much possibly <laughs> compromised uh, what they are about because to me, so much of it, I'm like, sounds like the Fratellis, <laughs> like maybe no, not I the don't. Fratellis, but like there is a lot of that. That to me, there's a lot of stuff that sonically reminds me of like Strokes or something, you know, like wow. those bands, or not even the Strokes, but just the the mid the mid noughties. Mm. and I don't have it's not like you want to hear 90s production we spoke about Life of Agony last week yeah. and we love 90s production I yeah. don't really care for mid noughties production mm. so that might have something to do with it I'm trying to think of a reason that not to break your little heart oh yeah, it's, it's broken <laughs> anyway it's been broken they came the from the sun thing. by your code name is Milo um, there it is you should go and have a look it'll be interesting to see what other people think about it and their memories of that band because I do have good memories of that band and I was like oh mm, okay but we'll see uh, next week Renfrey what have you got for me well I feel bad that you didn't like that so I'm going to guaranteed give you something that you're going to like I'd like to give you Pax Am Days by Fallout Boy Pax Am Days by Fallout Boy alright cool well <laughs> I think I can top that in terms of the oh, really? fucking hell what is this shit <laughs> this I'm going to give you for the first time Renfrey not an album or an EP but just a single song just one single song and you might go how are we going to be able to talk about a single song for such an amount of time oh trust me we will be able to talk about this song for the length of this entire podcast i truly believe that uh the reason i'm only giving you one single song is because it's the only thing that is available unless you go to malaysia where this band's sole debut album was released um and is now discontinued give the me song... space man by babylon z <laughs> no oh god you wish you would get a space man by babylon z i like that song the song is called bingo and the band are called catch oh my god i would like you to watch this. go on youtube and watch the video please is it a long song no wow okay it'll be good next week tune in because that it'll be worth the admission price of this podcast just to talk about that song. I mean, it is me. free, but uh, sure. 
Yeah, well, it ain't worth it, isn't it? So anyway, <laughs> next week, I'm getting the Fallout Boy EP. He is. And uh, Rempy's going to listen to Bingo by Catch. In fact, we're going to listen to that straight after we finish recording. Are we? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Um, okay, anyway, next week, we're going to be reviewing, uh, again, it's a pretty weird week, Beck, Lindemann, and Cattle Decapitation. And more. Uh, go to musicism.net and type in the word Riot in capital letters. You'll get 25% off all your courses. And we'll see you next week. Thanks very much, buddies.